Ah, welcome to Tinker Tailor Solder Fry, the Let's Try program here on the Mighty Loading Ready Live Video Entertainment Network. My name is Ian Horner. I'm Cameron. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, hello. Welcome as, yeah, welcome as always. Uh, yeah, this is the show where we do the creative stuff here, uh, fixing, painting, modding, etc. Mm. Today, uh, I think I'm going to attempt one of these microphones is bad in an ill-defined way. Okay. And we're going to see if we can figure out what's wrong with it hmm. uh, and not break the good one. I am going to try to uh, continue painting Silver Tower miniatures. Excellent. Which we bought last year and James asked me to paint very nicely. <laughs> so let's, let's hope I can get through maybe another one of them tonight. Mm. You, you've been making good progress on that no, one. No, I haven't. No, you haven't. <laughs> That's a lie. But you have, been, um, you have been doing it. I mean, they look great. Yeah. I'm, I'm really happy with how they're turning out, but I would like to actually get them done just because I think they're really cool miniatures and I want to see them completed. And then we can use them to mm -hmm. play the game rather than just look at them. Yeah. No, these ones, the, these are just for looking these at. Are, these are your looking? Yeah, these are just the looking at miniatures. Mother, mother, whose miniatures are we playing with tonight? <laughs> You got you got the company set, and you've got the uh, yeah. These the, are these are like the teacups that are in the the the, 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 in the side hutch. unit. Yeah, in yeah. the hutch. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be doing today is uh, fixing, and I will be able to hopefully fix. Whoa, that's that's not expected to be wrong with it. <laughs> I think I found the problem. <laughs> fix it. Oh no, wait, I did that. I did that a while back to make a soldering a desoldering braid. Uh, this is a bad XLR cable. I'm going to make it good again. <sighs> we used to have a big uh, box of old XLR cables, uh, and then they disappeared somewhere. So we'll hopefully find them, and I'll be able to get to those uh, in a future episode. Also, want to remind you guys that are subscribing today. Um, we'll get to your subscriptions at the end of the show because we have to pay attention to either paint or hot things. Yep. And so. So, um, on a previous show, I had primed this with Tamiya white primer. Mm -hmm. um, however, in order, because I like white primer, since it gives like a very uh, clean surface on which to paint, and it makes bright colors like pop. Um, you know, for tabletop miniatures like this, I use white. For um, other model kits, mm -hmm. uh, I use black, depending on what the subject is. Okay. Uh, so, right now, what I have to do, though, is clean the primer off the seams where the glue goes, because model cement is for gluing plastic, not primer. <laughs> and if you put it on primer, it just won't stick at all. Nothing happens. Yeah, nothing happens. So uh, that's what I, I'll be doing for the next couple of minutes. Can I ask to borrow some of your uh, paint water before it gets painted? Sure. Thank you. I forgot to. Just going to have a swig? Yeah. Get a sponge all spongy. That's warm water. It's nice. Dipping that sponge in the Flesh. warm water. Yeah, feels feels good. Flesh warm. Uh, what I'd like to do as well here is uh, just confirm that we have the the bad microphone and why it sounds bad, and compare give you an example of comparison. Uh, Beach, I'm just going to plug this into line three here. This is the sound. Let me. Should I mute you for this? No, no. Mute mute line three. Mute line three is muted. Okay, perfect. And bring it up. This is the sound of my voice coming through a good uh, Rode NTG2 microphone. I've muted uh, okay. line three. And this is the sound of my voice coming through this bad microphone. Did it sound any different to you, Beach? Not that different, no. Huh, okay. Did you want to do an A-B test again? Everyone can close their eyes, or? Let's uh, jiggle this around a bit here. Okay. Hi. I, I'm speaking to you through this microphone a second time. Let's jang it around a bit. Oh, okay, so that's what happens. Yeah. Let me jiggle it around. Let's mute that. Oop, and that happens too, which is not good for microphone. Yeah. Is when, you're, when your XLR pins come out with the XLR connector. Oh, yeah, that, that would be bad. That, so, I think I've found the problem. Yeah. So let's, so let's crack this open and have a look inside and see what we can see. Because I didn't know until recently that these microphones open up to expose a battery area. Hmm. Now let's see, how would I go about taking that all the way off? 
sure there's a screw on there somewhere. Let's leave the bad part attached to the microphone itself so that we know for certain. Okay. So there's no, there's no screws there unless it continues to unscrew in this manner, which it doesn't feel like it does. But so before you start on a project like this, do you find like schematics online or? That, you know, that's, that's a thing that you can do. I'm just kind of feeling this out by, uh, by ear right now. I mean, it's, it's uh, in the connection area. You've only got three wires to work with. Okay, so limited really. Exactly. The yeah. amount of things that can go wrong here are limited. Yeah. And I'm guessing that it's just a loose connection back here in the uh, in the XLR section. Mm. So which means we're gonna have to pull it out there somehow. And I don't want to completely ruin it. So I'm trying to figure out how that's done. Well, let's do a quick lookup of how to remove, let's see if there is something like that online, how to remove an XLR port from the back of a Rode NTG2. While you're looking that up, Ian, mm -hmm. uh, if there is a, um, some people in the chat are complaining that the sub notification is loud and you guys can't hear that, but I can. Um, is that internal to XSplit, or is that something we can control with the speaker's control? Um, it should be uh, an internal XSplit thing okay. that is linked to something, probably a browser oh. off stream, mm -hmm. Streamlabs or Twitch Alerts, or whatever they're calling themselves now. Oh, that might be where I need to do it then, okay. Settings are here. I don't think there's a... Well, oh. hot damn, our good friends at iFixit have a guide on uh, disassembling, or uh, disassembling, repairing a Rode NTG2 disconnected slash loose wiring. Oh. Which seems to be exactly what, what we're, we're doing. looking for, yeah. Oh, that's a three bar difficulty with 11 steps. I think we can do this though. Mm. Is it one of the ones where it's like, step one, secure a nice clean working environment. <laughs> step two, <laughs> you know. Well, step, Move your microphone over to the environment. Get step your, three, repair the microphone. Get your step workspace four. ready. Rubber oh. mat, all tools laid out, Me soldering <laughs> iron, heating up. Mise en place, as they say. Like, yeah. I'm guessing, yeah, yeah. It really seems like they, they want you to get in there quickly and uh, mm. efficiently. Right, as if right. It's a surgery. Where you, okay, keep, yeah. you don't want to keep it open for too long. Exactly. I imagine if you do, the temptation to walk away, and then you forget where you are and what, have, what has been done. But if you're not logging things. It does seem like, I'm not sure if uh, we'll be able to get a shot of that mm. in a second. But it seems to be having a very similar problem to what's being displayed by our microphone. Sorry. There we go. Hey, neat. Yeah, that's... Uh, Looks pretty much the same. So let's follow this guide through here. Doo, doo, doo. First off, we need to remove the screws. Surprise, surprise. Oh, actually, I think we'll want to use some precision screwdrivers for this. All right. I think I found the look that I want to use for the Night Quester because in the game, these guys are just basically painted solid gold, and I think that's kind of ugly. It's a bit uh, ostentatious. Yeah, uh, and also it doesn't really pick up a lot of detail. I've decided to try to replicate um, the Emperor Commodus's armor from Gladiator, Ooh. which is tacky in its own way, but I still think ostentatious in an interesting way. Yeah. And I have a picture here up on my phone, if we want to have a look at that. We could because he's got like four or five different outfits. Uh, ah. Yeah, so something like that with the white cloak and the white tunic, but the like glossy black armor with gold highlights. It's very high contrast um, and very elaborate looking, but I think I can work with it. Hmm. So maybe 
Maybe that's something we can do, Chad. <laughs> Gonna be quite fetching, I think. Mm. It'd be nice to see the uh, some gold paint too. That's yeah, the gold paint is uh, always kind of a mess to work with, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. For what reason? Um, it's metallic paints at this scale tend to be quite gluey and thick, which a lot of paint is, but when you thin it quite a lot, uh, it stops being able to cover. Okay. Because paint, as we have gone over, is medium and fixative and pigment. Um, and the pigment in metallic paints is based, from what I understand, it's actual like metal Just flakes. Just ground up metal. Huh? Yeah, uh, that doesn't work terribly well when it's thinned down. It's my tiny screw cup, because these screws are, in fact, extremely tiny. Mm. So, all right. Yeah, and as always, be sure to thin your paints when painting. You can always put on more paint. It's difficult to remove it, though. Not impossible. It's just <laughs> you, you don't remove some paint. You remove all paint. So we have got our paint down to, like, a milky consistency. Milky. And we're just going to put on a light layer of... Ah. Huh. That's a little thin, actually. That's quite too thin. To be perfectly honest, I haven't been terribly impressed with this uh, Tamiya primer. It has kind of an oily finish to it, which is almost the opposite of what you want from hmm. a primer. Not to be a pain, but uh, can you are not in front of your camera. There. Ah, yeah. So you can see we're getting quite a bit of beading here. Ooh, it's a little out of focus. I'm going to play with that a bit. Okay. The camera, this camera should have an autofocus? It does, and I just need to go find it. Okay. Yeah, I've not been impressed with this uh, Tamiya primer. Oh, look at that. Thank God for small favors. Mm. But hey, good news, I have a lamp, so that's <laughs> nice. Hey, now I need to gently loosen, and there we go. Gently loosen and pull down in order to release the tube. Now we need to remove the capsule from the head tube. Be gentle, there's a rubber gasket there that holds it in place. Well, I think we did that. Hmm. There's probably like a pin that's locking it or something. Oh, hold up. Nope. I maybe have done this incorrectly. All right, let's flip that around and have a look at the back side here. Identify the flange ring that holds the top capsule tube in place. Gently loosen and pull down in order to release the tube. Released. Okay. Then remove the capsule. Oh. Yeah, that's that's hanging on there pretty. Okay. Gently extricate the uh, capsule and it will slide right out. So this comes There we go. There we go. Now we know. Now we know. Now so there's the capsule, inside of which is all the microphoniness. Now we know. Okay, check for loose wiring on the top capsule end. I think that's going to be fine, probably. Yeah, that looks good. Not seeing any, uh, not seeing any problem with that joint. Ooh. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. This bit here is <laughs> empty. Looks like a fine mesh. Yeah. This is the microphone itself. Oh. That's that's it. That's the capsule. Yep. That's the the, the actual working 
working bit. Hmm. Keen. Mm-hmm. A lot of empty space in here, but I guess that's uh, to allow the, the sound resonance. To... Yeah, yeah, resonance chamber, I guess. Going into the resonance mm. chamber. And interesting. I think you'll find this. You'll probably find this interesting, Cam. Mm -hmm. Is that you can see here? There's slits down the side. Yeah. That taper as they get closer to the. Uh, oh. I'm not sure if I can hold that. Stuff. I wonder if that uh, helps to shape the cardioid. Probably. Oh yeah, you can really see it. Yeah. That's something we could ask Ben about. Mm-hmm. Did he leave? Yeah, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Ben. <laughs> Nothing we can ask Ben about. <laughs> okay, now check for loose wiring on the top capsule end. And this bit here, which again, I feel like is not going to be the problem. Everything seems pretty fine there. Just for fun, let's use our good friend, the multimeter, to make doubly sure that all of our connections are yeah. solid. No. the holes wrong for continuity mode. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the red wire is good. White wire is fine. Green wire is fine. Yeah. That's just me scrubbing it. Mm. Okay. Well, might as well check to make sure everything's in order before you, while well, you have the opportunity. No, this is not, this is not promising though. Oh? Time to locate the defective or loose wiring. If this is the capsule, then this is easy to resolder. <laughs> that means you have to have a capsule. Oh, no, you just resolder the the, uh, the wires onto the capsule. Oh, I see. That's not a problem. Check for loose wiring on the bottom connector end. If no loose wires on the top capsule, then we'll need to look at the bottom connector end. This gets a bit tricky, as we need to slide the round flange off the top of the tube in order to push the bottom tube all the way out to expose the connectors. Locate the single silver screw holding the circuit board in place and remove that. Oh, goody. Oh, there it is, right in the center. Thank goodness that was easy. Okay, dump that in the screw top. In order to do this, you'll need to disconnect the capsule from the circuit board as well as the bottom cables leading to the, the terminal. Before you disconnect, take photos of the wiring on both ends of the port so you can resolder them correctly. Oh boy. Well, this is going to be harrowing. I actually need to desolder that. That does not make me happy. I missed the screw. That'll probably make things a lot easier. <laughs> and it does. Alrighty, let's see how far I can get without having to desolder anything. Okay, got that out of there. Now, 
Yep, yeah, looks like we're gonna have to re desolder these these cables. Okay, I guess that's why they want you all heated up and ready to go. Hey, but that means we get to try out our desoldering kit. Exciting. Provided by, God, why does the name escape me right now? Texan? No. Mark that's the guy, yes. Mm. That's the name I couldn't remember. Provided by Lord Hosk. Thank you so much. It's coming in useful rather quickly. Okay, let's get ourselves all heated up here. Sadly, these types of mics aren't cheap, so. So don't That's touch why we're trying to repair them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't touch the ribbon in the end of the capsule. Has the chat been losing their minds telling me not to do that? There's been a couple of people who've been like, be aware, the ribbon in the capsule is very, very tender I mean, and delicious when steamed. It's mm -hmm. already broken. Mm -hmm. The ribbon in the capsule's already broken? No, no, the mic's already broken. Well, yes, we're, I mean. We're not using it. Yeah. Ian can't wreck it any further for us to still not use it. Let, well, <laughs> yeah, we, we should be clear. We're not using this microphone at this point. This is an attempt at... at Salvaging. Salvaging something that we might be able to use somewhere else later. But mm -hmm. yeah, if we don't recover this, that's fine. This is a let's try. Yeah. Sad thing is I don't get to keep this if it... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when doctors deliver babies, they don't get to keep them. <laughs> well, delivering a baby isn't the problem. This is what's called begging the question. <laughs> it's a well-known logical fallacy. Don't fall for it, kids. <sighs> Any comments while we're waiting for the, uh, the iron to heat up? Oh, several. <laughs> <laughs> what's Corey been up to? She's in GDC right now. Having fun being in Alcatraz. You can follow her adventures at Absalar on Twitter. Wait, she literally was at The Rock? Yeah. Wow, cool. yeah, She was in prison. Okay, yeah. neat. Yeah. I yeah. saw her there and she was like, there, she tweeted the thing about, um, you know, why is this goose in, in prison? It needs, it is Canadian, doesn't need to be here. And I was just kind of like, why are you in prison? That's more important. <laughs> it okay. Yep. I have a story. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, dear. Everyone's probably already heard it if they watched. Uh... Actually, no, I never told it. They can wait until another stream. <laughs> it's one of those ones that, as I practice it, it gets better and better. Hmm. Oh, Twisted Shout says, for what it's worth, I work with audio hardware in a studio and do this type of repair semi-often, and it all looks good so far. Oh, thank cool. you. Glad to know I'm not completely ruining everything. Broken, broken, everything's broken. You can only learn by doing. Or studying. Or by doing prep work. Or by mental training. Visualization. Theory. By being assigned to a graduate advisor. Oh shit, I was supposed to send an email today. Oh no. Did you need to take a break and do something? No, no, it's already uh, it's already close of day, so. Oh, no. Today on Tinker Taylor Solar Fry, we'll be writing a application for grad studies. Uh, mm. Not until September now, mm. but <laughs> well, did you read that article I linked on Twitter today earlier about uh, the uh, the information death of the universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where once, uh, you know, in billions of years, when we saw when all the distant galaxies are redshifted, mm -hmm. nobody will know to think that there's anything beyond the Milky Way. Yeah, but mm. to think or be able to prove. Yeah, it's... there's there'll be no experiments that can demonstrate that there's anything outside our own galaxy. So cosmology will effectively uh, never exist for any civilizations coming of age during that time. Which means we live in a very We live opportune. in a very privileged mm -hmm. period of time. Yeah. Humanity, check your privilege. Oh, it's in the keyboard behind the door. 
You know, this uh, is not coming off. No, it's just taking a very, it's not heating up as well as I'd like it to. This solder requires a lot of heat, it looks like. Which is probably good because you don't want a bad join. Cam, can you pull that in a little on camera? Wow. There it is. Mm. So I'm working on the, oh. his right arm. Their right arm. I mean, I'm just getting a layer of black paint on everything. Um, as a new base coat. I'm going to use the, uh, the third hand to stabilize this. Good. Grip in the place where you don't. I was very surprised when I, my the amount of cosmology I know about is essentially what was summarized in that Kruzgazat video, where they go through the steps of here's all here's where you are in the universe. Oh, just okay, so you yeah, understand, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And it was really I love all their videos because they're just so well animated, and the guy has a very pleasant voice. Mm -hmm. And um, I had no idea there was like local group, you know, like that was like a thing where it was like, oh, so you have a galaxy, and then you get outside of that, and I'm just like. Well, there's more names for things once you get outside. And he said, yeah, we have this other way of hmm. of categorizing things. And I was just kind of blown away. I'm like, so you're saying that we are so far, like even if we could travel through our galaxy, hooray, there's still a whole other ordinal. There's like another yeah. thing we have to be able to traverse, which we can't. And then that is, there's millions of those in the universe. I'm like, oh. Yeah. We're tiny. Yeah. There's a lot out there. On the scale of things, oh, we're lost. tiny. Okay, that went well. It came mm -hmm. out though? Yep, everything came out just fine. Let's have a look in his hands. Nice and clean. Mm -hmm. Let's get the other side going here. Let's see if I can. Blue, it doesn't want blue. White. White is out as well. And finally, whoop. green. Perfect. I'm just going to clean those out there a bit, too, with the sucker. Damn, that sucker works really nice. What is it? It just a, provides a quick vacuum, mm -hmm. pulling anything that's liquid. Oh, okay, solder, so liquid solder. Yep, into its maw. Isn't hot lead hot enough to melt plastic? Yes. But by the time it gets to the edge of the plastic, I think it's cooled down significantly enough that it's not actually melting the plastic. Oh, okay. Or at the very least, it's... Uh... Yeah, here's an example of what's coming out of it. When it hits the inner wall, it uh, forms... Oh, okay. Just a... Almost a gilding hmm. here. Okay, okay. Uh, we see it on your finger now. Okay, so that's the board. Good job, little board. Now, the next part is to, after disconnecting the wires on both the mic caps on the connectors, gently lift the circuit board from the housing. Slowly slide the flange off the, the me capsule end of the housing. This is a complete teardown, is it? Yep, pretty much. The flange. This flange? Yes. Okay, I get it. I see what's happening now. So this needs to be removed from this end. 
Oh, without breaking anything. Whew, that's delicate work. And then this just slides right off. There we go. Well, ish. What you mean, ish? It requires a bit of persuasion in some places. There we go. Now we know what's inside a microphone. Now we know. I will just Chinese finger trap myself in this uh, aluminum tube. Please never say Chinese finger trap myself. Thank goodness for causality. Oh. So here's our problem, I think, is that this is super loose. And I don't think this is supposed to be loose at all. We're doing a complete and utter teardown of this microphone now. So describe what is loose. What give give us a more distinct <laughs> more distinct what is loose? Please do not be vague. This bit at the back here, this <laughs> entire assembly of the XLR connector, everything in it is loose in a way that I don't think should be. Okay. And so I feel like ooh, yuck. Is there vomit inside? No, it just feels... There's too much play. Okay. Not enough kid. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm so happy. You know, I'm when we happy. wind up in a nursing home in 50 years... Oh, no. They're going to have no idea when we actually just succumb to dementia. Right? They're, you're going to be like, I don't know, they're making memes again. <laughs> that's, not, that, that's not just, you know, one of us in this. That's everybody. Yeah. Like all, all, all people gonna this age. It's impossible to diagnose dementia <laughs> among millennials. Like, they're just memeing. Does, wait, does that what mean then do? among Gen Xers that you'll never know what they actually want? Because it'll just be irony writ large? Oh, possibly. I mean, who cares what Gen Xers want? It's a fair point. <laughs> I mean, they'll be the first one. Like, the boomers will eat up everything. The Gen mm. X will be first to die. And we'll have to make do with the corpses, is my understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Though I am technically Gen X, if you believe the cutoffs. Mm. As am I. But it's like, eh, yeah. I'm definitely yeah, I think I'm the only culturally. Millennial in this room. No, I think Ian, being born in 1980, I think gives him the cutoff. Yeah, I... I... I, I I grew up enjoying things that were presented for the baby boomers generation. Mm -hmm. ah. I, I read Doonesbury. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't think there's a name for Doonesbury fans, though. It's true, chat. We do need an organized extant civilization in order to diagnose dementia. <laughs> So I'm not, hmm. There's that webcam. I mean, while we're all hunting locusts through the ruins of towers. Get into that bottom bit. Ah, there we go. Remove the circuit board and round flange. I can disconnect from the wires. And Aaron adds, Technical Millennial is my craftwork cover band. 
Bon, bon, bon. So it appears this big old metal hunk at the bottom here is a lot more, uh, is different from what I'm seeing in the instructions. So what do? Yeah, that's good. I think I'm going to attempt to pull it out. But what's it catching on is the question. What's this? There's really no description that says, hey, you should be able to just pull this out? You know, this piece is just non-existent in the... Uh, oh, in their, in their discussion. Yeah. Interesting. There's a good tool. Just kind of pickish. All right, that's interesting. I'm not sure what this is for, but... Words you never want to hear from a surgeon. <laughs> never seen one of these before. I suppose along with... Ew. Much like hearing the words, oh my god, from a paramedic. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't bother. It's okay, kid, get it all out. Can you uh, show off what you're doing there, Cam? Oh, yeah, sorry. That's okay. I'm just, just continuing to paint any plate armor black. I just thought it was interesting that you were working on it while it was still in the... Oh, yeah, it makes it much easier to hold on to. Yeah, it never would have occurred to me that would be like, oh, why don't you just use this as the method of doing it? Mm -hmm. That's cool. So what we've got going on here is yeah, the front the back oh wow so it's difficult to see under this lighting and this camera but uh we're getting there i think things i think I we're getting there things i never want to hear my paramedics say is it's better this way <laughs> just get his wallet <laughs> Would you guys rather have feathers or scales? Feathers. Fe feathers. Mm, I like feathers. Yeah, I know. Scales, though, seem easier to keep clean. Mm. I mean, we have the benefit of tool use, right? Like. Yeah. I mean, feathers in lieu of hair. Yeah, actually, they weren't. They weren't, They did not specify. This is a question from uh, hmm. who was it? Z Alpha. And now you know. In case you didn't know. Now you know. Now you know. Okay. There we go. Just required a little bit of force. This end up. Oh, let's see which end was up. Okay, so this is our little doohicker here. And I think I see why it, uh, why? what happened here. One of the screws got screwed in too tightly. This screw up the top here mm -hmm. should uh, be out a bit, sit through the hole to keep it from sliding back and forth and whatnot. So is that a set screw, or is that a is that actually like an assembly screw? I think it's just a set screw. Okay, interesting. 
let's uh, let's double check that. Let's see how far it goes out, and then we'll know for certain. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if you look at the top of it here, you can see that there's actually a uh, a lip, which would butt up against the the inside. Mm. So yeah, uh, I, there's your pro well, there's one of your problems. Lips butting up against the inside. So I wonder if, like... I think someone screwed it in thinking, oh, this will fix the problem. Mm. Uh -huh. And thereby created a second problem. I see. Let's again check continuity here just to make sure everything's all good. Okay, ground is good. Green pin. Seems good. I mean, like, there's no actual problem with the soldering joints, it looks like. And... Yeah, everything's solid. That's good. It might have been that the uh, the side I was I desoldered was the one that has all the contact issues. I think it's interesting that the picture that you showed at the beginning, where it was like, "Hey, your microphone looks like this at the end, right?" Well, we're going to tell you how to take the entire thing apart. <laughs> this is it. This is a microphone. Yeah. But did you need to actually take it apart in order to adjust that screw? Uh, I needed to take it apart to find out that that screw was even in there. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, technically, I don't think I needed to do that, but, uh, well, we did. I mean, we're here now. Like, I'm not, I'm not debating that that was the issue. I'm just kind of like, if it got too, like, if it got turned in too far um, on its own, like, through, through virtue of heavy use, <laughs> if it just kind of rattled its way towards being turned in too far, that could be a thing. I don't know. I don't know how Ooh. tight that screw is, so... I know that's a thing on, on cars, is that's why they have you torque things to a certain mm -hmm. level, because things will rattle out of place. Torque wrenches are a great thing. Yeah. By the way, inside of this microphone, filthy. Really? Yeah, my hands are just covered in dust. Really? Yeah. All right, well, then we have to take all of them apart and dust them. <laughs> just give them a nice bath. Yeah. <laughs> microphone bath and mineral oil. Thank the maker. Oh, thank the maker. My dogs were barking in there. <laughs> ah, too, you should really give this a try. Yeah, they never cram R2 in an oil bath, do they? No. Mm -hmm. they never... Maybe that's why he's always pissy about things. <laughs> and they never got Mel Brooks to do a droid's voice. Mm. Truly, we live in the darkest timeline. Mm. Kind of fun to watch a self-correcting timeline, though, last night. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Mm. That was fast. Well, I like how Warren Beatty was like, opens the envelope, reads it, looks inside the envelope for another card. Yeah, knows there's clearly something wrong. Yeah, hands it off to his co-host to be like, Am I seeing this? And she's just like, la la la. Yeah, she sees the she sees the thing and is yeah. like, I'm not gonna be careful about this. I'm just yeah. gonna go. And what's funny is though, all the tweets that I read were like people throwing Warren Beatty under the bus. And I'm like, he didn't fuck up. Yeah, he stopped. He was like, there's an issue. Yeah, here. yeah. Though it's it's funny because I know they also published that article where they said, you know, what would happen if anyone ever got the wrong envelope? It's like, don't worry, we have so many checks and balances in place that we'll make sure it all gets taken care of. And I'm like, hubris, hubris, hubris. Right, and. But but on, on top of that, I'm kind of like, you never said, hey, do you want to present at the Oscars? Well, here's what's going to happen, and here's the things you need to know. Like, yeah. they, they didn't have all of them in a room, and they said, here, everybody, we need you to, all you famous stars, yeah, yeah, we need yeah. you to understand, you can't, like, if you see the wrong thing, you need to say so. Yeah. If you see, like, you, you'd expect that the Oscars would be run a little bit better than your local subway. That's the yeah. thing, right? Like, you think, well, I must not have to say that, but now it's like... But now, I mean, everyone knows as well. Now we'll have to do that every single yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually have to put everyone in a room. Yeah. 
and say like, okay, this is this is what happens. I saw. Some... Make sure when you are given the envelope, make sure it's the correct envelope. Yeah, because you can always stop. Or if you open it up and it's the wrong thing inside, say, I'm looking at what appears to be the wrong envelope. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. Nobody did that. Your crash one. <laughs> Somebody had said that um, the way the uh, the one guy who was speaking at the podium uh, mm -hmm. or at the microphone uh, when they were trying to correct the issue and he was saying, because ultimately he's like, you know, this was really cool. It was amazing to come up here and do this sort of thing. It would have been even better if we'd actually won. <laughs> it turns out, Moonlight, you actually won yeah. Best Picture. And then I'm not even joking, whatever. And in, there's all this yeah. confusion, right? And then he reaches over and he... And he yeah, to and, he, and he pulls the card out of his yeah. hand and he shows it because it's like, I need to not yeah. make this a thing where I'm teasing them yeah. or whatever. Yeah, this just needs to be fixed now. Yeah. yeah. and Because I can imagine how pissed off I would be. Yeah, and somebody in a comment had said, I can't believe that guy was that disrespectful to Warren Beatty. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> he should have handled it with more class. I'm like, they handled it with a lot, a lot of, of class. class. Yeah. yeah. Both sides, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but obviously, like, quite obviously, there is no meeting that happens before the Oscars where they're like, we will hand you an envelope. When we hand you the envelope, read the envelope, read yeah. the outside, make certain it reads the award that you're presenting. Yeah. Because we will have read it mm -hmm. to ensure that it's the right thing. But when you get up there, you need to also be sure it's the right thing. We yeah. both need to be sure of each other. Yeah, so yeah. Some check summing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, the problem is, is that you might have a Shao one collision if you're not careful. <laughs> <right>? Like, <laughs> wow. Shao. If they keep if they keep giving away so many awards, eventually there's going to yeah. It's like oh, we can't give away the the. You know, 90th annual best uh, sound design award because it co it collides with the third annual best picture. They're not giving away awards for like best sword yet, so it's fine. Hmm. Yeah. Best sword, dude. I mean, I think my thing with it was last night when uh, actually Suicide Squad won best makeup, <laughs> and people were like, "Really? Now they're going to use this in their marketing?" Yeah. And I was like. Well, I mean, they probably should, yeah. right? If you win an Academy Award, even if it's a technical award, even if it's something like Best well, best it's, Makeup. It's a technical award that gets broadcast during the main broadcast. Yeah. That's, it's that. one of the important ones. Though people also... I mean, like, if it's... If it's... If, if it's laudable labor, it's laudable labor, right? Yeah. Yeah, it might... You might not... The people who are acting in it might not have been the ones who won the award, but at least yeah. the... Yeah, the award was deserved because of the pieces that are in it. Mm -hmm. Although I've, I've heard arguments that Star Trek Beyond probably... I saw pictures, and I because I hadn't seen Star Trek Beyond, but seeing the pictures of all the mask work and everything, I'm like, wow, yeah. that's kind of astounding. Yeah, like all the different like Federation aliens and stuff. Yeah. All right, so what's Ian doing now? He is heating up a wire and... Reconnecting the... Uh, the back end to the capsule interface. What's funny is that in the wide, it looks like you are literally, like, I just thought you put your leaded sol solder in your mouth. And you're just like, I'll just hold this with my tongue. But no, you have a, you have a cool little container that it snakes out of. Also, he can't talk right now because his mouth is full. Uh -huh. Mouth pipetting. Mm, I should also, <laughs> is, that, is that a thing that you do in extreme chemistry? Uh... It was a thing people used to do. Oh, okay. It's a thing I understand some people still do. Oh, good. It's not it's a, a super practice. bad idea. I'm just gonna pipette this hydrofluoric acid. I need 10 mils. Hold my beer. Hold my pipette. <laughs> Hold my beaker. I, like I mean, that, that should be a crap shot series, Hold My Beaker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Meep, meep, meep. The, every, but every, every crap shot would just end of an exterior of like the Bob Wright building just going foof. Yeah, or or like a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> Dong. Yeah. 
Okay, no shorts. So is that hair, Cameron? Yes, this is the um, hair for the, uh, oh god, what is it? The Elven Shadow Wizard. Ah. So I'm just doing like a very broad highlight on it right now because I'm going to go back over this with a wash, uh, which will tint the highlight and uh, collect in the crevices so that it generates shadows. And hopefully it'll look cool. But with these kinds of uh, highlights before a wash, you can usually be pretty, you play them pretty fast and loose. Mm. I mean, if you've got virgin glassware, you can, sure, you can drink out of it. I just wouldn't drink out of anything that's ever had anything in it before because even trace amounts of certain things are really bad for you. Oh, in fact, okay. trace amounts of a lot of things are really bad for you, <laughs> like most metals. Mm -hmm. you, you brought that up in such a natural way, I didn't realize it's, you were referencing something in the chat. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were just like, I have some advice to impart <laughs> to those people who are watching. I mean, virgin glass is way too expensive to use like that. Does it amortize? Like the longer you continue to use a beaker and clean it and all that kind of stuff? Oh, they, they get scratched. Usually they get abraded a little bit. Oh, okay. um, they get more and more difficult to clean. Sometimes they get etched, depending on what you've put in them, at which point they're garbage. Yeah, mm. I would assume so. Because um, like, you don't know what's hiding in the etching, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, if you're doing things like uh, um, catalytic research, then you need a lot of virgin glassware because you need to be certain that there's no, like I have a friend who does research in, in catalysis, and he needs to be certain that there is absolutely no platinum anywhere near his experiments. Okay. Because even uh, basically below detection threshold amounts of platinum will outperform a lot of experimental catalysts. Oh. Uh because platinum is so good at catalysis. Right. So that means that he could get glassware from, well, that must mean he has to redo the experiments essentially multiple, multiple, multiple times to ensure that with new materials every time, just to be sure yeah. that's the same thing. Yeah. Oh, Christ. It's a giant pain in the deck. Yeah. I mean, but and it, I mean, and, and at some point you've got to wonder like, well, if even, you know, a few platinum atoms are outperforming <laughs> your new very expensive to design and heavily research catalyst, why, why bother? That's a good right. point. Okay. Let's get in there. Ooh, that was good. What? The solder. You got a good shot of that? We got all that smoke. Nice. It looked great. Tree Skylark says, my boss accidentally bought 200 600 milliliter beakers instead of 20. No. Oh. Well, that'll keep some labs provided for a while. Mm -hmm. Pine glasses with room for head. I would still like to get one of those uh, Kleinsteins. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Klein bottles are really neat. Yeah. I would love to go in and make a... Graham and I have talked before about how, given enough time, we would love to do a documentary about the scientific glass blower at UVic. Oh, that sounds fan fascinating. Yeah. I UVic mean, is one of the few places in the country... I think it might be one of only two places in the country that keeps a scientific glass blower on staff. That sounds like the kind of thing you could do for one of those mini docs, like the like the five minute great big story style things, mm. and be like, "Hey, so we did this. If you and then maybe sell it to something like Great Big Story or Natchio or something like that. And if they like it, be like, we could actually make an entire thing. Mm. The only thing with that is um, we'd have to have the time to do it. And obviously, we're getting paid by our fans now, which means yeah. we don't have to go looking for many contracts." Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, New Day tomorrow. What is New Day Tuesday tomorrow? It will be Adam playing Horizon. Right. Thank you. It'll be a little later than 
normal. Let's also be clear, horizon zero dawn, not Forza horizon. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's more than one game with the name horizon in it? Well, Man, who there's also a Plymouth. Yes, there is also the Plymouth Horizon. <laughs> the car that thinks is a boat anchor. I think that would be a great thing for Adam to play on the day. That was the day for to build Horizon. The Arrogant Worms did a great song about the, hori the Plymouth Horizon. Oh, did they? Yep. Well, the Arrogant Worms did a song about the Plymouth Horizon. I happen to think it's great. Okay, that's good. Okay, so everything's back where it should be. I thought you were going to say everything's backwards. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's fine. We can all sound out of phase with ourselves. I think I made a mistake, though. Oh, good. This is the best part. Took the words right out of my mouth. Did you not get the thing on when you needed to? I might not have. Let's take a break now, let's, Yeah, let's... let's... Let's go to a commercial. Oh, boy. Okay. Please enjoy the following commercials. Engage in some commerce. We'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Tinker Tailor Soldier Fry, where Cam is painting figures once again. How's yep. it going there? Uh, pretty good. I've taken a break from the Quester Knight, and I'm moving back to the... Um, Mistweaver. Ah, to do some finishing so, touches on that? Yeah, as it turns out though, looking at it, I've probably got quite a bit more work than I thought on this thing left to do. Ooh. So, it hmm. looks really good from a lay person's perspective, but you know what yeah. you're going for no, there. No, I, so. I, I keep seeing details on it that I have just completely <laughs> uh, uh, failed to paint. So <laughs> that'll be great. I'm trying to put this microphone back together. How many of you, of you at home uh, remembered that I was supposed to put uh, this back on before I soldered everything, because I forgot. Thankfully... This is your fault, Chad. <laughs> thankfully, there's just this piece of uh, plastic in here, which keeps it from falling all the way back off the bottom end. So instead of putting that back on, we're just going to make this end fully re replaceable. Or fully removable. People just have to remember that. Does it does it need that in order to engage all the pieces together to stay attached? No, I don't believe it does. And in fact, I think most people who work here uh, didn't know that these microphones unscrewed like that. Okay. I mean, as long as they come together. That's so all no big about. loss. Now the question is, will this go on without my, without having to re-solder? And I think it might... Ooh. Hmm. Well, let's get everything back in place first. And then we can figure that out. All right, that needs to go the other way. It was in upside down. These need to get threaded back through this bit up top here, which thankfully has a slice cut out of it. Specifically, I'm assuming for threading these wires. That's that was a jump. Good snap, yep. right? Snappy, yeah, that was, that was a good snap. Yeah, that was a good snap. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> never, never needed it. Never didn't not need it. Okay, so that's in there much better now. Uh, and then this just screws down from up top, goes over that piece, I believe. Yep. Where do you connect to? You pulled that off after the uh, the board was out. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true I did do that. Okay. But we're trying to see if we can get it onto with the board still attached. Yeah, beach. Who? <laughs> Tight. 
tight fit, but it makes it. Nice. I'm amazing. <laughs> I'm humble. <laughs> All right, so I've got the hair looking at least a certain way, then. All right, let's have a look on the webcam. Mm. Oh, my. I mean, actually, that doesn't really get across the layers, but it, it came out nicely, trust me. I'll tweet pictures later. Uh, we can, you think we can get it on the uh, the other camera, actually? on? Uh, yeah, here, on let me... manned camera? Yeah. yeah, you bet. That was the wrong camera. That's woo man. Yeah, that's a bag of pretty. <laughs> Hopefully, once that settles down a little bit with the uh, the wash, it'll uh, come out all right. Hmm. So does all it have to sit right. for a bit in order to actually? Maintain its color? Or? Uh, it will washes dry a bit slower than paint. Okay. Well, oh, because you have to, the water has to evaporate. Yeah. Okay. Lots of love from the chat. I mean, you have the chat open. You can probably see all that scrolling by. So. Yeah, but I like to hear it from you, too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, straight up, I don't give a hell like, what they think. I think it looks pretty. So. Well, thank you, You're Rich. a terrible voice for the chat. I am a bad, bad voice. I'm a bad chat voice. Chat works at Cam. Aw. Thank I you, Heather. I can see all the hearts from here. No. <laughs> And Beach is the Baba Booey of Tinker Taylor <laughs> Solder Fry. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even the main sidekick. I'm like the the third or fourth guy who comes on to just be an idiot. Are you our Majin Boo? <laughs> 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 wow. Beach just stabs me in the throat. What's that little thing, Ian? What what's what little thing? Oh, it's a screw. It's it's all screws down from here. All right. Majin Beach, exactly. Ooh. I like it. Oh, apparently, Twitch ads are being quite loud for a lot of people, which of course we can't do anything about, so. Mm -hmm. Sorry Take to it to someone that. who cares. Yeah, <laughs> can't do a goddamn thing for you, so. No, it's too bad. Yeah, so that's, it's, a, that's it's a shame. Very, it's very TV, right? Like, it's too bad this is happening, but it's kind of like, wow, that seems an awfully familiar, right? Like, we've yeah. heard this before. That sucks. Can't do shit about it, Captain. Yeah. We ain't found shit. All right, that paint bottle is dead. I bet that feels good, though, uh, to finish a paint bottle. Well, it wasn't finished. Oh, well. It's just a calcified lump. Oh, no. Do you ever make it through a full bottle of paint? Oh, I have before. But they die beforehand? Uh, well, they, they frequently die beforehand. The old Games Workshop bottles uh, were quite a bit better. Like, I've had this bottle of, say, Hideous Blue, since, uh, this is probably like from 98 or 99. Okay. You were um, kidding when you said Hideous Blue. These bottles that look like bolt gun rounds uh, die real quick, and mm -hmm. you wind up with these. Uh, it's, whoa. It's just a solid plug of paint. Ugh. So let's look at the Space Wolf Gray, for example. That's kind of... Gluey. Yeah. This is still usable. Like, you can just thin that. Yeah. With thinners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or water. Okay. Uh, the Vallejo paint bottles are a bit better. They're actually much, much better. Do they just not dry out as fast? Yeah, well, I mean, they're... Oh. They're an eyedropper. Neat. Right? So there's limited amounts of ways the paint can escape. However, they do lend themselves to getting plugged up. <sighs> Always difficult remembering which way things go in. I mean, we could go to the playback. Oh. Just w if you want to 
we could just cut straight to the VOD. We could. <laughs> but where's the fun in that, Beach? Mm, it's true. I think you missed out on the let's try portion of the stream, Beach. If you are interested in seeing Ian put this back uh, the way it came apart, uh, please go download the VOD and play it backwards. <laughs> Okay, that's unfortunate, but probably un can't be helped. The uh, the bits of the mesh on the top here are catching on the inside of the microphone casing, which is kind of annoying. But that's super weird. Oh no, that's that's normal. Okay. Actually, I don't need to use that. I can do this beforehand. There we go. Just put this in by itself. <laughs> Why noise? That was super good, by the way. Your mic's getting all of it. Why noise? Mean you louder. Everyone brush. Yeah. Fuck me up, fam. <laughs> I don't know if the mics are picking it up, but oh, that's got some no. serious overtones. Oh, they absolutely are. Like all of the all of the additional tones that are going on right now with that with that grind. We need to twist it too now, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why did I do that? to get that back in there, actually. Uh, I think I'm going to want to put, push that back out again. But that's not going to be easy. I'll need a hook. Thank goodness I have some. That's interesting. What's interesting? The uh, the mesh came in a different came out in a different manner. <laughs> it came out a different shape than it went in. Yep. Why why are you handling the mesh? <laughs> well, thankfully, this is not part of the the active part of the microphone. Okay. Sure. No, no, none, of, none of us wants to say sounds like my first time, right? Yeah, no, I mean, like, obviously we were all thinking it, yeah. so... Currently, the way that microphone is, none of it's the active part of the microphone. Touché. Uh, okay. So let's do this... ...thisly. Ow, 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 ow. Do we have any hemostats? Uh, Band-aids? No. Hemostats, the, like, um, lockable tweezer oh, scissors. I think we... not hemostats. Yeah. 
I got like three of them at Princess Auto one time. They were like in a, yeah, it was like a um, customer appreciation sale, and they had a whole bunch of different stuff. I got that and dental picks. We appreciate you. Hold things open with these. Yeah. No, no, the these clip closed, right? They they pinch stuff closed. We appreciate you. Hold things closed, closed. with these. Yeah, exactly. If I catch you using dental picks around the house, I will leave. I have a set of five dental picks uh, hanging out at home. I have them locked up downstairs, don't worry. Yeah, you gotta keep your dental picks and your teeth separated. Can't store them together. Yep. Do you have your locks on? Oh, they are forceps. Nice. Somebody once told me they were called hemostats. I'm like, really? I yeah. thought these were forceps. Pretty sure <laughs> hemostat is something different. Yeah, good, because they're like, uh, the hemostat. I'm like, I don't think that's right. I'm like, no, that's what it's called. I'm like, yeah, all right, fine, fine. Okay. you work you, here. You know I what? Mean... Yeah, that's the thing. You work here, right? So. All right, I ain't paid to argue. Oh, we do have locking tweezers. They were sent to us. We guess I think we had a whole bunch of tweezers sent to us. True. Yes. Yeah. I, I also don't know what they'd be useful for. So, in this situation. Okay. Now I just need to get this all up in there again. Oh wait, there's a hole. Okay, hang on. That I have covered. That should not be covered. No, they are hemostats. What I own is they are hemostats. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that yeah, sorted I'm glad, out. I'm glad the chat helped me figure that shit out. That would have haunted you. Mm -hmm, forever and ever. So, uh, I, uh, Nurgle mm -hmm. uh, points out that Ian is either going to fix this microphone, microphone or he's going to make a badass lightsaber. And Ian's already made a lightsaber. It's true. Not on the show. No, no, it was from a, uh, a Graflex Flash. As you do. As is, as is tradition. Mm -hmm. I understood it was tradition to make them from random parts of, like, garden hoses and sprinkler heads the first, and shower heads. Th that's part of it, but the, mm. the main body was part of a, uh, was made from a Graflex Flash. Oh. Yeah, the part, the big uh, silver thing they hold. Right. Yeah. And the, the main... Uh, Emitter hood, I guess you could call it. Well, and that's the, like, the cylindrical thing was to hold the batteries for the flash? Was that what that was Correct, intended for? Yes. Yeah, okay. I don't mean to be sassing uh, you, chat. I mean to, I mean to be um, irritated at the, at the whole process of knowing or not knowing what these things are called. But now it has been figured out. And now I've had people confirm it, so that's good. Okay, that needs to be twisted 90 degrees. Good. Good. There we go. Now we can slide this on. Hopefully. And my wife is not posting in chat and giving me crap. That's good. I'm memeing. That's not the same you, thing as giving you crap. I'm sorry, yes, you were memeing. You were not giving me crap. You can't take every meme personally just <laughs> because you had a problem in a Condor Hustle art, you know? I need to... I, you, <laughs> Says you. I need to mute my mic and we need to concentrate on what's going on on screen at the moment. <laughs> I say that every time, but I never do. Oh, Skip Lives has pointed out that forceps are balls. A pair of pincers or tweezers used in surgery in a laboratory, so you could also qualify my hemostats as, as forceps. They mm. could be called both. That's the great thing about the human language. 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 Oh, boy. Human language. Human language. This just keeps getting worse and worse. <laughs> you want to give us a rundown? So, yeah, the, the, the mesh is getting caught in the microphone. That's bad. Or in, in, in the uh, the casing here. What if you took the mesh out and left it out? I think that's actually what's going to have to happen because I think the mesh is now a lost cause. Will it be weird, do you think? I don't think so. I think it'll probably sound perfectly fine. Okay. Well, that was a good Alex. Okay. 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 And that's just what we're going to do. Where's my hook? Where's my where's my snare? The, they are now threatening to mail us uh, a gross of hemostats and forceps so we can tell the difference. <laughs> Is that like doing lines through Amazon Prime? I don't think we need that money to tell the difference. 
I mean, like, a picture would do. Yeah, it's true. Well, somebody did send a picture, but now they're just like, no, straight up, we'll just send you bags of them now. They're probably cheap on Amazon. I mean, I imagine you leave forceps inside patients all the time mm -hmm. in surgery. So. And we've been meaning to get to that here on Tinker, Tinker Taylor. Tinker Taylor, yeah. So, surgery? Yeah, yeah we'll sure just... That's Tinker Taylor Surgery Fry. No. Tinker Taylor Surgeon Fly. <laughs> yeah. Surgeon Fly to Cuba. So this microphone can probably end up being the one that we use in the uh, studio A, B. A or, God, I can never remember which Where's one is studio what. A. This is Studio A? Okay, yes. then Studio B. Because it can remain stationary. Mm. You can get the green screen thing off. And, well, I guess you can just move the film over. Yeah, that is a, yeah, just move the foam over. I need the green screen sheets maybe a little tight, tighter than it needed to be. Yeah, but that's not bad. I mean, yeah, if, if this works out and it can just sit in one position, that's that's awesome. And we can actually get uh, a workable, roamable road back. Are these video mics? Are they, these aren't the podcaster. No, these, these are the NTG2. Oh. What that exactly means, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. But they're a good microphone, Bront. I was doing so much. I was on Rude's Rude Rude Good but Fluid. I was on Rude's website, uh, staring at all their different boom poles, and I I think I have a problem. I haven't held boom in probably months, and I think you I, son of a bitch. I think I have an issue. <laughs> Guess what, sure, dude. What duty you're on this weekend, motherfucker? Isn't it live this weekend? Yeah. There's pre-film bits. Yeah, we, that's we true. We can make you stand in the corner of the room and hold the boom. That's just, yeah, during the intro. Yeah. No, during the whole show. During the whole show, I'm in the back holding the boom. We'll take out the lab. For 90 minutes. Yep. I mean, hold let's it be, nice and steady. Let's no be chance. fair. No, almost, almost no live has ever run 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And the one that did, we were like, that was a little short. Yeah, God, we really Yeah, we were on schedule. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, oh, oh hell. hell. What, man? I think the last one we did was um, uh, an hour and 12 minutes. Oh, really? Which, yeah, so it ran yeah, a little, I it ran 15 minutes short, roughly, but it's like, I feel like we really compressed everything in there. Mm -hmm. Well, that was when, like, we were all at, well, not all of us, obviously, but, like, when Graham and Kathleen and James and I were at... Yeah. GP van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we got rid of all the time wasters. Yeah, Someone man. called that their favorite episode. Time for the webcam. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> no, seriously, we all... I think it's probably true for most of us that we think we do our best work when we are not present. Right? Like, I look at all my favorite sketches, the ones that people ask me to recommend. And the uh, ones you haven't been... Yeah, they're ones I'm not in. Huh. I find if I don't show up, a lot of LT doesn't happen. Mm. So, different experience. Ooh, yeah. Okay, Beach, let's find out what this sounds like. Okay, I'm muting you first. Uh, well, why are... Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to find this. All right, you are very mute. Uh, let's go to the wide. Hey, give me mic number three. Mic number three. This is Ian Horner reporting to you from inside of a microphone. I keep talking. I'm going to keep talking. Does this sound okay or does this sound like ass? There's absolutely no sound whatsoever. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Hang on a second. How about if I do this? No, Does that's... this make it any better? Does no, there's better? zero oh sound. Oh my fucking god. Why is this... Oh no. We watched a murder on live stream. It's very methodical. Oh, that's that sucks. Are you sure you're on mic three? Well, why don't you try the other mic? That's a good question. Yeah. All right. If that was also the problem, how did I break two mics? <laughs> hey, this is Ian Horner talking. No, to no, you. hang on, hang on. Okay, now go. This is Ian Horner on mic number three. You are very loud. Okay. <laughs> Put it back on. Everyone said they could hear you for a second. Maybe, maybe there's just something about. Yeah, maybe you just loose. need to jimmy it a bit. Yeah. How does this sound? Can you hear me? 
Can you hear me? No. Can you hear anything? Like whoa, that? whoa! I uh, just I heard I heard the mic go. I heard the the clunk of okay. electricity flowing. What if I do that? Anything there? No, I'm getting anything crackle. There? Oh, I'm getting pop pop. Anything there? No. Poppy pop pop. Pop again. Pop. Okay. Okay, so we use that mic for out of the stream. <laughs> Let's continue with the uh, the tricks. All right. Maybe you needed that bit that you left off. Mm, no, I'm pretty sure I did not need that bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's see those uh, figures nice and close. Uh, Heather. Yes, please. Those ones. The ones that he's before? Get in super tight, yeah. Alright, give me a sec. These ones? Yeah. Are we happy? No, not yet. There's like a little dog there, too. It's a griffin. Oh, it's a griffin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Duh, beach! You can tell Sorry. when it's bigger. I, I, when it's that tiny, I... Go ahead. I, griffins are something you can ride around on, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, well, maybe a baby for that one. Baby Griffin. Mm -hmm. All right, those look good. Those look real good. Really, really good. Okay. Ah, that's why. You had a soldered connection come off. Oh. There's your problem. Now we know. Now we know. Now we know. Somebody, uh, somebody went bang drinking to see what you guys were drinking, and uh, mm -hmm. Ben is busy drinking Di Sereno and Coke. Oh, oh really? Yeah, Apparently. Oh, you I wonder if he could make me one. He should have come by. Yeah. I have no idea how we set that. Is that we uh, have to tell them at the beginning of the stream? When you tell them the mods tend to update it. I see, I see. So I'm having a uh, Driftwood Brewery fat tug. Hmm. And I'm going to the pool after this, so I'm having water. Because <laughs> you don't want to be just... Sauced. Lit up and yeah, that's that's the best thing to do before you go have a workout is just you know get sauced. It's good to get very drunk. You got to stay hydrated. It's you know get your electrolytes. Look, this uh, as with all things in life, The Simpsons had the best advice on this: night swimming and drinking. What could go wrong? Glad I didn't deheat the soldering iron. Hmm. Okay, check for shorts. And then let's check these again. Ian Tookie is emotionally invested in this microphone, so it has to live now. <laughs> T Tookie is? Yes. Okay. Well, um, let's do a quick mid-roll test here. Uh, Heather, in just a moment. Has Tookie watched Game of Thrones? <laughs> You're typing in three? Yeah, would you uh, open up three for me? Hey, this is Ian talking to you in the microphone. Oh, I can hear you. Okay, that's good. Uh, that means it's working. Okay, let's button it up then. I think all the, the jerking around of it while it was uh, trying to get that, that screen back on 
was what was causing the problem and caused the, the red to come loose. Should be good now, but we'll test again once we get it all buttoned up. I've always liked the term "buttoning up" when we're uh, uh, referring to okay. you can run the camera. when we're referring to reassembly. Mm. I've always heard it used in reference to tanks. I think the first time I heard it was was uh, in the Enterprise D technical manual. Oh, really? To be super nerd about it, but hmm. in reference yeah. to what? In reference to buttoning up the Enterprise oh. in its final construction. Oh. At the shipyards, making it fully spaceworthy. Yeah. Oh, but it was just that kind of down home terminology for what is what has got to be a, an incredibly technical test. Yeah. Especially for a civilization that doesn't wear buttons anymore. Mm. Oh, wow, yeah. Where it's a complete, like... Oh, yeah. Anachronism. They don't even have buttons on their keyboards. Mm. Right, what do they call it buttoning up? I assume it's because you hit this button. Right? <laughs> Make me think about the last BlackBerry. Room decided they were going to release a new phone. Didn't work. Well, no, they 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 did it. I oh, don't, I don't know why, but they sure did it. Is that like uh, what was their tablet that you needed to own a BlackBerry for? Oh God, that's right. Was it the Playbook. Fire? The Playbook? The Playbook. They couldn't give it away. Yeah, it was. It was Amazon had the Fire. Right, right, right. Poor Rim. I mean, they, they were such a Canadian success story. Yep. Just like ATI and Matrox. Yep. Oh, wow, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, those uh, ATI technically still exists. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so Canadian does Matrox, board. actually. I mean, you look at the uh, the ATI packaging, though, and they always seemed like they were Taiwanese. Mm. Well, that's what sold the industry, I think. Yep. That style. <laughs> that the, the Power Rangers movie style? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, well, I, we tested it. The important thing is we tested it before we put it back together. Nice. Although I keep forgetting to put screws. No, no, I can get these ones in. Great. Home. Yeah, Rim fell victim to the to um, thinking that the whole smartphone thing would blow over. Never fight a never fight a phone war with Asia. Mm. <laughs> Once this iPhone craze blows over, mm -hmm. people will want their keyboard. Well, it's 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 very important that we deal that that business drive this industry. You know, Apple may Apple may have a few profitable quarters, but uh, people will the, come back. In the end, this is this is really just a children's phone, a children's toy. And what what happens when those children grow up? Well, let's be, uh, they'll take they'll take what their business gives them. Cam, when those children grow up, they're going to need a Microsoft Outlook client. Well, it just become collector's items for those children. Yeah. That's what happens with all your old toys. Yeah, like Nintendo's. Where are they now? <laughs> they made a plug and play for nostalgia. They're in a crate in my in my living room. <laughs> That's where they are and they're never leaving. Mine are on a shelf. Good for you. They're inside of all of us. If we're we use and other virtual consoles. People are freaking the hell out about the Switch not having a virtual console at launch. 
It will have a virtual console at launch. They're all like, oh, but it doesn't have one. Well, I mean, I can, I, can underst I can understand why they're freaking out about that so much not having a virtual console at launch. What other games will they play? A ding dang do. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have a lot of games in my backlog. I've got plenty of games to play. There's not like 60 new ones next week. Is that thing out next week? This Friday. Holy yeah, crap. Time flies. Yeah, I'm not... I kind of don't feel like my body is ready. Man, that was an odd choice of words from that guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that was, you'd think that guy would be pretty heavily managed. <laughs> you know, being what president of... Nintendo America. North America, yeah. Reggie, Reggie, before he was president, was head of PR. He knew really? exactly what, what he was doing. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yep. We can, uh, we can do some mics. Yep. Okay, so Heather. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess mute is number one, I guess. Yeah, yep. no, I realize how mics work. I mean, Give me channel three. Channel three? Hello. Oh. Hello, this is Ian talking into a microphone. I sound very lovely. Okay, mute me. And then... Give me channel three. Done? This, yes. This is Ian speaking through a second microphone. They both sound the same to me. Then that's exactly the way they're supposed to be because I swapped them between. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Rubble, rubble. There is a rattle noise when but you do that. But that's because of there, there's rattling components and stuff. As long as it's not uh, I, a which static you, sound. You've given me a warning before pulling that plug. But <laughs> sorry. Sorry, chat. Uh, okay. To the sound people in chat, did it sound the same? That's a good question. <laughs> After being compressed heavily through Twitch? Mm -hmm. I mean, we well, just the, want to know there, if they there were the people same, right? earlier who were like, I can hear the difference. Yeah. yeah. But I've swapped it out and we'll put that one in the streaming office for testing through the rest of the week. Success! I've, <laughs> so I've successfully fixed a thing. That feels really good. Let's do that with this cable now, too. Nicely done, Ian. Thank you, Cam. So, the chat, one, one chat member says that it still sounded slightly buzzy, but not terribly noticeable. That, uh, whereas others are saying it seems satisfactory. Yeah, we're, we're in an interesting position where I can't actually test it here because we're live, but. One hmm. says it sounds black and one sounds green. <laughs> Yeah, and, and of course we're hearing one sounds this and one sounds that. That's not unfortunately telling us which one is which. Yeah. I know. I think the one that sounds green and the one that sounds black is very clear. Accurate. <laughs> one sounds strange and one sounds charm. Semi charged kind of cork. Oh, interesting. So the part that I had to uh, unscrew to get to tighten up this part uh, is not readily accessible without disassembling the whole damn thing. Excellent. Until you make the mod I've made. <laughs> Do we have an oscilloscope? We really should get one. Yeah, they can't be that much. I mean, especially not from uh, with some of the stuff they're making in China these days. Yeah. I really kind of want to get my hands on one of the uh, Chinese $500 laser cutters. Mm. Because apparently Me. you can very easily mod them to be good. Neat. I wonder what the coherence length on a, a cutting laser is. The weird thing is that uh, it's it varies based on what sort of air air assist cone you put together. Interesting. Yeah. The uh, well, that makes sense though. Yeah, because you want to make sure that you're blowing away as much vapor mm -hmm. as, ha as happens. But if you blow too hard, yeah. you end up uh, smearing things. Hmm. The, wh what's interesting to me is the, the exercise you need to go through in focusing and aligning the hmm. mirrors and whatnot. But to find out what the best height is for mm -hmm. your laser focus, apparently what you use is an inclined plane of uh, acrylic. Huh. And you just have your laser cutter do a, a line across. Right, right, right. And, and then, then you can... You can see right away, okay, that's where it starts cutting. Right. Neat. Yeah. Oh, well, there's your problem on this one. Oh, loose. It's literally a... Uh, a broken... A, yeah, just detached. Right. 
Well, that's going to be an easy, easy esque fix. Uh, Ian Texan wants to know if you want a DIY oscilloscope build kit. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Thank you for the offer, but... Uh, How do you test it? Th th that's, <laughs> if there's one thing that I want to make sure is working when I, when I use it, it's probably an oscilloscope. Okay, well, this one's going to be super easy, so let's just get at it. Let's jam that back in the hole. Get it nice and hot. Maybe add a little bit more solder. Oh. Oh. Am I looking forward to Modern Masters 2017 at all? Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously. I'm looking forward to having uh, the experience of opening a Scalding Tarn and looking at it and wondering if I should just pick the Lightning Bolt instead. What's the best way to get into this? Did I say looking forward to? I meant resenting. Yeah, I understand there's some good cards coming. Yeah. Okay, uh, I should probably explain a little bit about what I'm doing here. Um, this is an XLR cable. There are three wires on the inside that you need to be concerned about, as well as this uh, string-based stress relief. Got your red, your white or clear, and then your ground. And I wish I'd done more research into what XLR was all about before the show today, so I could tell you with authority what these things are for. That's not the way we roll here. No, we figure it out as we go along. Legit part of the joy about taking things apart. Yep, yeah, he's just figuring out uh, how they work. Yeah. I've been catching up on my behind episodes of James May's The Reassembler, which was a huge uh, inspiration for this show. Oh, really? And he I've never heard of it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's just him being an, a nice gentleman. Mm -hmm. uh, reassembling from component parts, things. Uh, hmm. The most recent episode was a Kenmore mixer, or Kenwood. Oh, mixer. like just a kitchen mixer? Yeah, which is actually the model that I own, or rather... Those things version. must actually have, like, hella gearboxes. They really do. And like, they, they, are... they have to be small mm -hmm. and, and sturdy, and right, for like 10,000 hours. Yeah. For 500 watt power on those things, too. Hmm. So we're not, we're not talking about a, a small amount of torque. But the gearboxes are quite interesting and fairly uh, fairly simple. Hmm. They're one of those things that uh, are still designed to, as you say, last forever. Yeah. But also that the like the exterior might have changed a bit in the past. Mm -hmm. I think fifty years they've been in production, if not more. Right. But the internal, like that that gearbox you mentioned, is the same gearbox stamped out of the same. Steel. Hmm. Really, but, uh, for that entire production time. Yeah, because I mean, you get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 crunch the numbers properly. You build it, and, yeah, there's and then nothing yeah, to change. You did it once. It works. Keep doing it. Yeah. Let's check our continuity here, just to make sure that I'm not. I don't need to cut the cable anywhere else. That's good. White is. Also good. Wowzers. And finally, ground's good. Okay, now this I won't forget. Make sure to put your sleeve on before you solder <laughs> the cable. Don't. 
Don't do what Donnie Ian didn't. So how I understand XLR is a balanced signal means you're sending it, one of them is sending it uh, out of phase with the other. So mm. the two, the two, um, the two that are send that are sending, one of them is sending out of phase with the other, so that you know that you have perfect zero. Okay. Because when you add them together, it's supposed to equal what you're getting on ground. Right. So that oh. and that evens uh, that uh, eliminates the the possibility of interference. Yeah. Interesting. That's very clever. Yeah. And you can do that also with uh, quarter inch jacks like TRS. What you would think is a stereo jack. Mm -hmm. You can also wire that in a balanced way too. Yes. Um, but most quarter inch stuff tends to be wired in an unbalanced way so that they're sending they're different uh, signals. Right, so it actually does its own error correction. Yeah, so it's, people tend to, you can wire an XLR cable in an unbalanced way as well, but I don't think that's... Uh, it's rarely used. Yeah, it's a rare thing. There might be audio text in the chat who would say, oh, we would use an unbalanced XLR for X reason, but... Yeah, I'm sure there is a reason. Yeah. Okay, we need to ply, or ply open those jaws a bit too, and I'm going to get the uh, pliers out for the crimping. You call that crimping? Oh, oh wow. The audio cables I ordered this morning have already shipped. <laughs> Nine. Oh, did you get them from... Um... eBay. Okay. Because I ordered some from um, Monoprice? Monoprice three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, they're shipping from Rancho Cucamonga, right? Cucamonga? Liter literally, Rancho Cucamonga is where Monoprice ships out of. Gazoomtite. Where the fuck is that? It's California, apparently. <laughs> like, I was taught that Cucamonga was... Some place that Bugs Bunny should have <laughs> turned left at. Yes. Yeah. Like when Paul said that they shipped out of like Zanzibar or whatever and he couldn't remember the name of it, I was like, maybe it's Chattanooga? Because mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. he mentioned somewhere in the the southern United States. Yeah. yeah like so that's that's t Tennessee, right? Like the choo-choo. Yeah. Um, or someplace, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, apparently no. it's California, which I suppose is technically within the southern half of the United States. Well, true. Mad Man Oreo says that Rancho Cucamongo is about 30 miles west of L.A. Oh, sorry, east. <laughs> west of L.A. would be <laughs> an <laughs> offshore. <laughs> that explains why Monoprice is so cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In international yeah. waters, like China. <laughs> okay, now I'm... All these silly American place names. Cucamonga, Albuquerque, <laughs> Walla Walla. Chattanooga, Washington, <laughs> Hamilton. Who'd name a city after that guy? Berlin. Nuremberg. I still thought that was funny that to find out that Berlin, Ontario had to change the name of their city because they were like, oh, this isn't going to go well. <laughs> and they changed to Kitchener. <laughs> really? Yeah. Look, wow. It was weird okay, it yeah. Out. Yeah. Uh, we uh, can't be named Berlin anymore. Who do we name ourselves after? How about Lord Kitchener? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're Wait right. We're going to have to do that, aren't we, in order not to get burned down? This also reminds me of a thing I once heard. This said the best way to get the, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the right answer on the internet is not to ask a question on the internet, it's to offer the wrong answer on the internet. <laughs> that seems valid. Yeah, well. And as Chad is telling me, yep. you can actually go west of LA because oh. the ocean is south to that part of L that part of the continent. Weird. Oh, it's like my parents. They I mean, I in... don't know geography. I really don't. My... I expect other people to tell me. <laughs> my... I have little maps. When my parents were in, uh, were, when they were staying in um, uh, Mexico for six months, years, they snowbird. Mm -hmm. They were on the north shores of the Pacific. 
in Mexico. Really? They, they face north in the Pacific. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it was at one point, point where in like it bends the, like this. The then, Yucatan? Uh, or? Uh, Guayabitos, hmm. which is about an hour away from Puerto Vallarta. And it's oh, like okay. right on, obviously right on the coast, but it, it's just at this point where it curves, so it faces north and then it starts to curve south again. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you get your cable soon. Uh, me too. I would really like to be able to do my cable management, finally. Because right now I have cables touching the floor. Oh. Ugh. That means you're going to get dust. Yeah. Like an animal. I'm just going to use most of the solder that's already on these contacts here, but mm. yeah, maybe I'll add a bit more. Okay, those feel solid. Yep. Yep. And yep. Okay, time to once again continuity test. Pin two to pin two. That's good and solid. One to one. Good and solid. And three to three. There we go. Copacetic. That is an XLR cable back in action. Nicely done. You just saved us, what, like 60 bucks? Thank you. It's not quite that much, but... I thought XLR were quite expensive. They can get expensive. These ones are not the expensive oh. kind. Oh, okay. But, you know, 30 or maybe $40. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a decent length of cable, so... Yeah, maybe, maybe about that. Nicely done, Ian. Thank you. I, I, I like to... I like to repair things and make them good. No. You've done a man's job. It's too bad she won't live forever. I'm a little sad that we uh, fixed all of our uh, lighting umbrellas early mm -hmm. before we had this show. Yeah, it's a shame we had, we had to do filming in the meantime. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a shame that we fixed a thing that we needed to use yeah. years ago before we had this show. You're right. Yeah. Terrible. It would have been fun Ter to have Terrible them. waste. <laughs> well, I mean, we waited long enough that the bo the box full of dead XLR cables disappeared. Yeah, that's a shame about what happened to that. <laughs> Just a box of garbage sitting around that got thrown away for no good reason. <laughs> well, that box was specifically being saved to make a it into... A real fucking shame. <laughs> I wonder what happened to it. Go ahead, ask me. Time for us to check the tensile strength of this cabling. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> I know. I wish That's you would. why you don't get it. <laughs> we have fun here on Ticker Taylor Solar Fry. Remember kids, play safe. That's a lie. <laughs> Establish a safe word before you stream with your friends. We get paid to be here on Ticker Taylor Solar Fry. <laughs> All right, what's our time like here? Maybe we should take a quick break and then we can yeah. come back with a bit more uh, of something. I have an idea. But yeah, quick commercial break. We'll see you after these messages. Don't go away. We were discussing our favorite line deliveries from mm -hmm. Star Wars movies. And my previous one before... Um, uh, 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 Rogue One? Or not, not Rogue One. Um, Force Awakens? Force Awakens was the Imperial officer saying, you rebel scum, um, in, on, Jedi. And, in Jedi, when they, they break into the bunker on Endor. And you can just see that guy wanting to try that line over and over again until he got the right delivery. Uh, but that's been replaced with uh, Daisy Ridley running across you know, the blasted landscape of Jakku, uh, referring to the Millennium Falcon and saying, that one's garbage. Right, like she just, mm, like the, the disdain in her voice is so good. 
and Ian mentioned that his favorite one came from the prequels, yes. but before I, before he could say it, yes. I suggested that his favorite line was, Misa cause a big bomb of genocide, which is, you know, in the cutscenes, but... Um, but definitely happened. Yeah, De definitely happened. Definitely. But I, I never actually let Ian share what his favorite line delivered <laughs> Which was. Which was the one I like. I began to know with the you want this, mm. don't you? But that's not even from the prequels. That that's was from, from Jedi. Jedi. That is from Jedi, God, dude. what am I doing? Fake geek boy. Yeah. Do you two want to hear the results of the uh, injury poll? Injury poll? Which is oh, something they do. Yeah, well. sure. Yep. Give it. Uh, number one is Cameron develops a taste for paint after he drinks his paint water by accident. That's why I put it over here. Very close in uh, number two is E gets a small cut on his hand for ever giving the microphone taste for blood. Okay. And then number three is in solder vacuum snaps miss mid-use, firing the piece into the air, causing a complex sequence of events resulting in the caving in of the friend zone, which is Ooh. actually really far from here. Well, like, I could see that, like, the vacuum chamber just firing a jet of like liquid lead, like an anti-tank shape charge Ooh. directly into the side of my skull, right? Because that's about the distance, yeah. right? Like if you look at like the um, the prong on like an anti-tank rocket, right. <laughs> they're about that long, right? Because you need to give the, the copper jet time to form. Okay. <laughs> so you've probably noticed what's going on here. We're gonna play some Dreamcast that, Yeah, we've got the Dreamcast back. <laughs> The Dreamcast lives, it boots at least. Uh, and as you, you remember from previous Tinker Tailor Soldier Fries, we've, the hard drive I had just wasn't one that was going to ever mount because it had the clicky click of death. So now we're going to attempt, I have a second ID hard drive which I pulled out of an Xbox at one point I think. Hmm. It's a Western Digital Protege enhanced ID hard drive product of Malaysia. How big is this one? I can't tell. How big was the initial Dreamcast hard drive? Oh, 500 megs or so, I think? Yeah, I was going to ask if it was on the order of like 250 or 500. Yeah, they were not large. Because they were from 99, right? 99.99? Right. I mean, a, a, a gigabyte wouldn't have been unheard of, right? No. We might have been able to get that, but I think I upgraded mine with a 6 gigabyte. Mm. when I eventually did that. Let's use some of those tweezers. Forceps. <laughs> I don't know, they've got these wooden things on them which make them look like barbecue implements. They're really good though. Okay, so I think, yeah, master, normal, but then we need to make it into slave when we boot it up. Xbox hard drives were apparently five gigabytes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. That seems larger than I would have expected. Well, that thing was like the Ford Escalade of, um, <laughs> or not Ford, whatever. Plenty the Aztec. Yeah, the Escalade of, of consoles, Cadillac. right? Cadillac, yeah. yeah. Actually, no, Cadillac is Four lanes like... wide and 10, 15, or 30 feet long. I wouldn't be surprised if Cadillac was actually the, the, the metaphor they were using in Internal development, yeah. they wanted the Cadillac of consoles, yep. and somebody misunderstood and was like, all right, it's two lanes long and 30 feet long, or two lanes wide, right? 65 tons of American pride. Burns fuel like nobody's business and is weirdly popular with the elderly. Yeah, smells like a steak and seats 35. And you're narrow. All right, let's... Get the battery out. The unfortunate thing about having too much RAM in your MacBook is that it eats battery mm. when it sleeps. I think I've got too much RAM in here, but that's the way it came. 12 gigs is enough, right? Oh, yeah. Remember RAM disks? Anyone out there remember RAM disks? I don't. Could you explain to me what that is? RAM disk was a great little feature that Mac OS Classic had up to System 7 where you could take bits of, you could say, I'm going to take this amount of my RAM and turn it into a disk that you could oh. use between boots. 
And as long as you restarted your computer and didn't shut it off, the RAM stayed charged. Okay. So real power users would uh, take as much RAM as they could and put their system on it. Huh. It was like the, the old... Uh, or the, Right, the old, so it was just super, super like fast loading. Yeah, like the equivalent of a flash drive back in the 90s. Right. But you need to have enough room for stuff to live in RAM and then to also be copied to RAM in order to run. Well, yeah. I mean, like back then, like 640K was, you know, an infinite expanse of RAM in which little common bat files could run and frolic forever. Mm -hmm. oh, and there would be a mouse driver, maybe, that was sitting off in the corner occupying, like... That sounds a lot better. Ooh. Equipo de Programicon. What's going to be on this hard drive? <laughs> Is Go it just, like... Pamela Anderson nudes Go from, from government 98? secrets. <laughs> Why not both? Yeah. The anarchist cookbook. Mm. Oh, hey, here's something interesting. I say, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Optimistically. So we've all seen these stickers on the sides of hard drives, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Does anyone yeah, yeah. know what they're for? No, actually. I recently found out because I accidentally punctured one, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if it was if I just killed the drive. Yeah. Turns out, no, they're actually there for diagnostic purposes. Oh. Uh, so you peel them open, and you mm -hmm. look inside, and if it's full of, like, black matter... Yeah. ...or little bits of, uh, of Debris, metal dust, right? they're fucked. Oh, okay. <laughs> because that means <laughs> that, that you've had a head impact. Okay. <laughs> but if it's nice and clean, then you know that you might not need to disassemble the drive, or it's worth disassembling the drive. So All right, so then. You, you peel the sticker off, and if it's filthy, you're like, oh... You're yep. boned. Yep. And then if you peel it off and it's fine, you're like, oh, I'm fine, but now I can't put any, I can't put it back on the hard drive. Well, you can. I mean, it's not a sealed environment. Yeah. Like, it's, it, well, true. it is sealed, but it's open air. Is... When I had Western Digital hard drives, what they used to recommend that we did was to take scotch tape and follow it around the black tape that's on the outside. <laughs> the black tape was very, very thin. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you just take scotch tape and run around, even just the corners is fine, but just put little bits around whatever. Um, because our hard drives are garbage. Because it will tear if you're not careful. Not Western Digital didn't recommend that. The techs that I worked with oh, okay. do that to the drives because we don't want people bringing them back with like with like torn up bits. I'm like, should we just not be like more cautious when we put them in the computer? It's like <laughs> no, just do this. I have no idea if that helped or not. That was the superstition. Hmm. Uh, Ian, you have a question. They want to know if you will be doing an HDD disassemble at some stage. Oh, Ooh, yeah. I've got to a, get the mirror? Yeah. Or the uh, the magnets, really, are the good part. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a and window And some LEDs. Hard drive. I've, got a, I've got a number of old hard drives uh, lying around. So, yeah, we could, we could definitely do that as a... I should probably keep around some, just in case we need to go long on an episode. Ooh. Dream Shell on hard drive. I recommend maybe not leaving them in a box in the equipment office. <laughs> yeah, things tend to disappear there. <laughs> Garbage. What the hell is my Raspberry Pi anyway? I don't know. That I didn't touch. Yeah, I'm glad. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So it looks like I need to download my Dream Shell. Also, Wait, uh -huh. it's, it's not mine. Mm. It's the sites. Oh. Yeah, they already paid me for it. Actually, I, I didn't throw away a box full of, you know, electronics at any point. I was just expressing my support for whoever did. <laughs> just throwing away a box of broken cables. Oh, don't That must have felt so good. We, ooh, okay, there's another box of cables in there that is not all broken, and we can't throw away. It should away. be labeled. <laughs> it really should be. Yeah. It should be labeled. That would be nice. <laughs> wait, What's wait. this? Box of broken cables? Is it any different from the box of actual working cables? Meh. Well, they're, broke. we, well, they're we... broken. Well, they don't work, and they're right next to the box of working cables. Wow, that fan. Which fan is that? The that's one, the Dreamcast. The one over there? Yeah, yeah, that's the Dreamcast fan. Is this TV on? Is it plugged in? Well, there's a problem. There we go. Anyone else smell ozone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that noise. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, 
I love going to dcswap.ru. <laughs> Such an amazingly Russian site. It freaks everyone out. I, I didn't know we were making a home, a home Bitcoin miner. <laughs> I remember the time I was playing Civ Five and my computer went and I quote, "WAP." <laughs> and excuse me. <laughs> and I smelled ozone. <laughs> and I needed a new power supply. Dream shell. But it RC just went four. WAP. That's like, a weird sound for power supply to make. Yeah. Yeah, that, did did the computer continue? Nope. Okay, that's yeah. It just it had that to say and then went to sleep. <laughs> Fapo. It might have been a fwap. That's good news. Yeah, it was the caps going. Yeah. <laughs> they they died valiantly. Oh, wait a minute. I wonder if I'm using the right drive or not. Where's my controller? All right, plug this in. Give it an actual date. We'll have to go back in there and, and give it a uh, new battery at some point. Today is February 27th, 1998. <laughs> uh, you give it... Can we tick it over to 2000 and just see what happens? <laughs> We're going to Like December 31st, 2000, 2355. Yeah, I don't know if they expected it to last that long that they would have well, put an only Easter egg like, in there. It was only three months. From launch, right? Yeah, but that calendar has a four-digit thing. It's oh, probably fine. Yeah. It's the two-digit ones that had the issue, right? Right. I wasn't even looking. I was mainly just being snarky and destructive. <laughs> you continue being you, Cam. You're adorable. Oh. Really? <laughs> Brown. So I'm hoping that it, I haven't messed up the wiring on the card reader. So that might be the, the questionable link here. Oh man, remember that show, The Weakest Link? The watch the <laughs> watch the snippy British lady be mean to people show. Yeah. Let's double check again with C Man. So C Man loads, then we know that's not the problem. I think I recall C Man loading last time. Sector 88 wants to know if we're going to do a Sega Saturn mod. No, I, I have no uh, love or no history with the Saturn, so I'm not particularly interested in doing that. Do we have a need to do a Sega Saturn mod? Not that I'm aware of. Unless we want to play Utena. There was a Utena game on the Saturn? Oh, yeah. Oh. And it's, well, it's been translated as well. It's... We're going to be playing that at some point on <laughs> Matters of Import. At some point. <laughs> Is it awful? Yes, <laughs> and yet it is a Mary Sue 
uh, fantasy fanfic. How, how'd you like to date Utena and completely miss the point of the series? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how'd you like to be a girl while you do it? I, uh, yeah. It's kind of, kind of the point, I guess, really. Gosh. Wouldn't I need why, to be a boy to date Utena? Why, why, why do you have an issue with being a girl? Beach? I don't. I have no issue with that. I'm don't. sure you don't. I'm really That's a weird bug. bug. Shouldn't you need to be a boy to date Utena? <laughs> <laughs> How's your painting going, Cam? Innocently. I ask because someone in chat has actually asked. <laughs> Not to be snarky. Even if it came out that way. <laughs> It's going well, I think. I'm trying to figure out how to paint this entire thing. Uh, the figures I'm painting right now are from Sil Warhammer Silver Tower. Cream shell on hard drive tutorial. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it, it's just this copy of this disc that's giving me grief. Let's try running it sideways for no reason. Hmm. Does anyone have a copy of the full series of Utena, Beach? Yes. Cool. Apparently, it's on, apparently it's on YouTube. Uh, legitimately on YouTube. Yeah, you can really? the whole thing off the internet for free. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. In a legitimate manner. And chances are good that if it's on YouTube officially, it's been sampled from the Blu-ray restore. Okay. So, yeah. We should all get together and watch it, though. Yeah, yeah let's should. let's hang let's, out and watch let's, Utena. Let's do Anime Club and watch Utena. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've only seen the second arc. <laughs> I've been meaning to do a rewatch for a long time. What about the OVA? Oh, the movie? Yeah. Rather? Or the movie, yeah. The yeah. movie's super fun. It's interesting. Yeah. Definitely needs to be watched, though. It's very pretty. At least once. Uh, okay, well, I guess we put the hard drive. Can you close up on cam? Yes, sorry. Sorry, I'm not really doing anything interesting right now, but you can see the figures that I've worked on previously. <laughs> so what I need to do now is format this drive as FAT32. I mean, that's obviously going to be my rapper name. Fat32? Yeah. I like it. Oh, this is an 8 gigabyte drive. Uh, the suggestion is maybe to put the CD in the MacBook to see if the MacBook can do it. That won't work because if you recall on previous episodes of Tinker Tailor Solar Fry, I removed the CD drive from this MacBook to replace it with an SSD. And you didn't fill the hole? <laughs> well, I filled it with an SSD. <laughs> I mean the, the slot in the well, side. No. You didn't, you didn't center some aluminum onto the... No, you can, you know, you can just hold, hide matchbooks in there if you really need to. <laughs> nice. You know, it's where, where people slip you their digits. Mm, 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 mm. I'll never forget the time that I was at a pub crawl and a really cute girl wrote her phone number on my pub crawl t-shirt yeah. and then I threw it in the laundry when I got home. <laughs> And she wouldn't make eye contact with me for the rest of my university days. Oh. Wait, did you explain that to her when you saw her next time? No. No, that would be even more uncool mm -hmm. <laughs> than just blanking her. Okay, power down the drive. Well, disconnect it. Turn it into a slave. By correcting the jumpers. And now let's attempt to connect it. Wait, no, that was too soon. Too soon. I haven't installed anything onto the drive yet. Plug it back in, push this down, repower drive. So as you can see, I've painted the, um, the black on the armor. This is just the front half of the man. <laughs> then the back half of the man is over here. And again, I've painted the black armor, but I'm painting the cloak and uh, 
uh, stole, which will be white. I'm starting off with a dark blue-gray, and then I will be highlighting upwards. And we've got kind of a nice velvety finish, finally, over top of that. Um, and I was fighting the primer for much of it. <laughs> so I'm really not going to buy this primer again. I'm going to try to avoid using it on the rest of these figures, hmm. since this experience has been profoundly negative. What kind of primer is it? It is uh, Tamiya White Primer. Other primers are available. Many other primers are available. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to try Tamiya because I've had pretty good experiences with their paint um, in the past. And yeah, for whatever reason, this has not worked well. It's just too thick. Uh, it produces a very glossy surface. For primer? Yeah. Usually you want your primer to be kind of um, pebbly and porous so that it drinks up yeah. paint Amen. instead of producing a glossy surface on which paint beads. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe it's a stylistic thing. <laughs> Seems like a bad call though. IMO. You can really hear that hard drive tick-tack away. Mm. Does the chat have any questions for these two? Yeah. How's it going I out think, there, chat? I think we, we're in a very good yeah. chat time. Yep. AMA. H me you. Let's eject both A S L. We don't speak it. Oh, no, I can't speak for you, but mm. I do not speak the ASL. Kim, mm -hmm. uh, do you enjoy Age of Sigmar as a game, or are you painting them as a standalone game? Uh, I'm painting these for um, uh, Silver Tower, which is a standalone game. I have yet to play Age of Sigmar, but I do know that I really, really liked Warhammer Fantasy Battles, and that I kind of miss it. Um, I thought it was a really, really well-balanced, well, maybe not well-balanced, but it was a great setting, and I liked the rule set. I played Dark Elves, and I had, like, an army that was mainly just spearmen and, and crossbow, crossbowmen, and they always overperformed. Nobody took them seriously. I remember playing in this one game where this dude charged a block of, like, ogre bulls led by a hero into the front of one of my spear blocks, and I'm like, you know, you declare what your response is going to be to the charge. And I was like, hold. And he's like, all right, <laughs> if you want. And I'm like, we hold. <laughs> Later, as we were cutting bits off the ogres, <laughs> we reflected on what a bad idea it is to charge something that has higher weapon skill and higher <laughs> initiative than you do. Uh, but then again, they didn't know that because they were just really big dudes, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. That was a good feeling. It was a really good feeling making somebody respect a 30-strong block of Spear Elves. What is everyone having for dinner? I haven't decided yet. Hmm. I'll have to come up with something. Half-price Domino's. Mm-hmm. I think I can eat pizza now. Oh, Half-price Domino's. Maybe. We'll see. All, most, I might need a knife and fork, but I Monday could nights. maybe do it. Really? Yeah. I will try to do pizza. I'll have a look here. Okay. I am so fucking mad at the Domino's Pizza app. Yeah? Yeah. Like, I'm so mad that I don't even care that this is completely, sounds like first world problems on my part. Mm -hmm. They gave it a, they, when you go to type stuff in, they give it a custom keyboard. Ugh. They, they made a custom keyboard for their app. Why would they do that? Why would you do that ever? Right. And the thing is, is they're not the only ones, because I'm pretty sure... One of the banking apps I have did the same thing. Mm, that's a real good thing you want to have when you're dealing with banking information, which isn't At like all. when when you're when you're entering passwords and numbers and yeah. like account numbers, right? So I just oh, and I think oh, and the eBay app, I think it too also has a thing where it's like oh, no, we don't let you access your passwords from one password or anything like that. Like if you go into if you go from eBay to PayPal. Right. It's like, oh, well, I need to type my paper. But it's like, no, no, you don't. Yeah. No, no, you you need to remember it and then type it all in, don't you? Like, the oh, hell with that. So. That. But if I did that all through Safari. Yeah. I'd be able to do it because Safari's 
got its own keyboard. But right, right, right. I don't know if they... I thought the whole idea of, of having, like, standard system keyboards was that everybody would just say, I guess we'll just use that. Yeah, but apparently not. Apparently not. Well, isn't that wonderful? Beach, would you do me a favor? Yes. And grab me the the binder of uh, Dreamcast games in the other room. Yes, I can do that. Thank you. And yes, today all menu priced pizza is <laughs> price. Really? Mm -hmm. Wait, menu priced pizza? I guess that means like non custom pizza. Oh. Let's have a look. Fifty percent off all pizzas at menu price Monday only. I'm oh, sure oh, from not from coupon. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that is, you have to go to the coupons in the app to declare. Oh, okay. But, yeah, you can you basically say, I even I think if you even want to say, I want to build my own pizza, they'll just let you build your own pizza. Okay, as long as it's, like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cam, have you ever done a kit bash? Uh, yeah, yeah, lots of times. Um, a kit bash is when you take several model kits and smash them together and make something new and different out of them. Um, so I've done that a lot with Warhammer figures, where you take, um, like, Imperial Guard figures and Space Marine figures, and you make something new out of them, like an Inquisitor. Um, That's, that is a uh, PS3. The, the person whose kid bashes I love the most in Warhammer 40k work is, uh, I think he's Scandinavian, but he posts under the name uh, Migsula, M-I-G-S-U-L-A. Uh, he, they, they have a new website, or new a couple of years ago, but they do really good work and they really, really grok the Warhammer aesthetic. I highly recommend you go and check out their work. Does anyone have any web comics they're reading at the moment? I'm fucking reading questionable content <laughs> because I've been reading questionable content for like 10 fucking years. And eventually something will happen with it, but I can't <laughs> stop now because I'm invested with it. And occasionally it's pretty funny. It's it's actually like he's built an interesting world, but like... <sighs> Durr something! I think like three days in actual time has passed in that webcomic in the 15 years it's been going. Uh, I also read like Gunner Craig Court, which is fun. I love Oglaf. Oh, Oglaf is... Oglaf might be the best webcomic ever written. Yeah. And I don't even mean that facetiously. At this stage... Like, the writing on it is so routinely excellent. Um, uh, um, Cucumber Quest is adorable and beautiful. I don't recommend that to anyone who is looking for a new webcomic. Uh, Alex highly recommends Kill Six Billion Demons. Mm-hmm. Um, Julie reads a lot of like, um, I forget the artist's name, I can't find but it. they draw, um, okay. what is it, do? Menage no. a Trois, okay. and a couple of other things. Where should I look at? Uh, just around the corner area, maybe it's up on the, uh, on the shelving though. But it's not in the Ikea bag. And it might not be, I probably not in there. the Ikea bag, okay. I don't see it there, so. Huh. huh. And the hard drive is... needs a reboot. Oh, and yeah, Saturday morning breakfast cereal is one that I also, also read. Also very good. Yeah. Hmm. Oh boy. This drive may also be faulty. Remove that for Like now. there were tons of, of web comics I used to read, and then I realized a lot of them just aren't very good. Like, remember when you used to read Mega Tokyo? <laughs> and then eventually you were like, wait, why the fuck am I doing this? And the old standby sluggy freelance. Whoa. Oh, Holy shit. What did I just walk into? <laughs> 
sluggy fucking freelance. The, the webcomic chat. Oh, okay. Well, I should be good at that. Ba hey, remember when there weren't any good webcomics and you just read fucking anything? Yeah. Beach used to do a segment on a podcast we produced called Beach's Webcomic of the Week. I always have a different one every week. Every week. You... 54 episodes. Yep. Yep. That you... was about when you stopped. Yeah. You read a lot of webcomics. Yeah. Not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. You know, I think the only one I check in on a regular basis is Awkward Zombie. Hmm. I do like Awkward Zombie. Um, I like I don't stay very well invested in web comics because I forget to check them. Yeah. But Awkward Zombie because it it delivers the joke generally within one or two pages. And Mega Cynics. Oh yeah. Yeah, Mega Cynics actually. Yeah. Mega Cynics. yeah. yeah. Because Ash posted that she's like, I did a new one. I'm like, great, I want to see what happens. Yeah, that's true. I love to have these little insights into your life where Brad breaks his arm, apparently, or something. That was real. Was that real? That wasn't real. Okay. It might have been real. Oh, and Oglaf. <laughs> Oglaf, like, honestly, I know we, we talk about it a lot, but it's really, really clever. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one of the ones that actually makes me angry. It's so clever. Right? We, like, the, the, what are they, the vocabulary bears? I don't remember them. Um, there was one where they're just sitting around reading the dictionary, right? And one of them goes like, oh, look at this word. And it's a word that means um, it applies to certain kinds of insects, and it means like a segmented, they have a segmented body plan, but they're also hermaphrodites. Mm. Um, and one of them just goes, wow, every part of that word can go fuck itself. <laughs> I'm like... Oh. <laughs> How did you do that? Why did that surprise me? Wow. Why didn't I think of that? So, this person, Yamil Yamil Yamil, has asked, what are all your thoughts on the desert punk anime? Desert punk anime? I'm not know. familiar with it. Sunabozu? Yeah. I don't know which one they're specific to. Specifically talking about. I think talking about yeah, I know that that's what they're talking about. I and uh, one episode. I didn't even give it that. Mm. It doesn't seem to be my cup of tea. No, oh, there you have it. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Why won't you mount? Speaking of mounting, the new corp line is. Uh, <laughs> I got to hear some roughs. What do mm. you call them? Some rushes. Dander sure. finished product anyway. <laughs> so there is new corp line incoming. We just don't know when because it's not finished finished. Right, right, right. Yeah. But the rough edit is completed. It's super funny. Yeah, I was listening to it. It's really good. And I don't remember parts of it. <laughs> like, yeah. There's an entire segment where I talk and I was surprised myself at the things I said. Huh. So that was good. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. We don't have any CDs here in the office, do we? Like audio CDs. No, 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 like CDs. Write writable CDs. So just to make this even less uh, probable that it's going to happen. Hell yeah, I like this. Um, maybe we do? Okay. I might need a new bootloader CD. All right, let me just see what, what happens. Slave mode. Like, the Saturday morning breakfast cereal, where the one guy is talking to God about, like, you know, hey, God, well, thank you for um, mathematical proofs. And God's like, what are you talking about? It's like, you know, mathematical proofs, like being able to prove that, you know, there's no largest number. And God's like, I'm sorry, what? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can prove there's no largest number. And it's like, the largest number is one. And the person's like, well, what about two? And God's like, every number is just an arbitrary number of ones combined. <laughs> It's, it's not a new number, it's just a stack of numbers. That's like saying, if you had the largest grape, that two grapes would be a larger grape. How stupid are you things? <laughs> right? It's like, well, what about irrational numbers? Like pi. It's like pi is three ones and a segment of a one. 
I'm so in love with this comic. Oh. It makes me so happy. But just the idea that God is sitting there going like, wait, 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 wait. You think if you combine a bunch of ones together that it makes a new number? Oh, I have to go back to the drawing board. How did you guys get into space? This is a problem. So the reason I'm looking for CDRs is I'm hoping that maybe by burning a new uh, bootloader disc we'll be able mm -hmm. to get this up and running. So I think that seems to be what the problem is right now, is it's not reading the the CDR to even get to the point where it should be looking for either the, whoop. Either the SD card or the hard drive. Mm. Come on. It sounds like you can do it. It's thinking about it. That, that is the, uh... Ian, they yes. want to know how you're going to burn a new CD if your laptop doesn't have a CD drive in it. We have other computers in this office that do have CD writing drives. Thank you for clarifying. Till then, we'll just keep rolling the dice. Eventually, eventually it will boot up, and then you just never turn it off. Yeah, so that, that's how it works at that point, right? Yeah. yeah you start measuring the uptime. All right, we got a stable build. Yep. Ship it. <laughs> We've gone gold. I almost feel like, is tapping it worth it? Ian, Sarah S Sarinde wants to know if you're going to get Russian malware on an office computer again. I saw that, and the answer is no. No, we had to talk about the, that. The Russian, <laughs> the Russian malware has never been my fault. Yeah, I think that was, was that Alex and Graham trying to get something to work on? That was more likely watching watch and play I think than so. it was yeah. For, yeah. Uh, Ian. Uh, Mr. Ran wants to know from Ian what your favorite underrated anime is. My favorite underrated anime? That, the, Kimono Zume, I would have to say. Not enough people know about Kimono Zume. And it is, uh, it is fantastic. And it's not Kimono Friends. Uh, no, Kimono Zume is a, oh, sort of a Romeo and Juliet story told with monsters and a generation spanning uh, organization that's trying to destroy all monsters. And you can probably see where it goes from there. But the art style is fantastic by uh, uh, Masaaki Yuasa is involved in it, who did Mind Game and uh, Ping Pong. The soundtrack is spectacular if you like your jazz. Hmm. And, uh, if you're a fan of Adventure Time, he's the one who did the weird episode <laughs> where Finn and Jake turn into yeah. birds. Yeah, the, the oh, weird Adventure oh, Time okay. episode. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I could not handle that episode. Yeah. If you want to know anything about the director, it's like, well, if you haven't seen any of his anime, that's something he did Western. He Heather and I were just talking yesterday on uh, on Rhythm Cafe about how she can't handle the works of Masaaki Yuasa. Okay, well, the Adventure Time episode is a sp very specific thing. I can't handle characters that I know turning into things and getting eaten by things. That bothers me on a different level than than what things look than like. Than ping pong. That's that's different. Ping pong is a completely different art style that I have a hard time with. All right, time to put an X next to Vor. <laughs> Why isn't there not an XX next to Vor to begin with? <laughs> Sometimes, when a very sp <laughs> when a man loves another person very very much, they share a very special kind of kiss. <laughs> Okay, oh, that's right, I need to reinstall. I was going to chat, type it for you, chat, but unfortunately I haven't logged in and I need to reinstall one password. Got there for you. Thanks. There's a lot of noises going on here. It's happily muttering to itself. It's derived from Bakemono, which is monster. Kemono Zume. The Kemono, I believe, is meant to reference the Bakemono part. Mm -hmm. Of 
grind, grind. I feel like we just need to warm it up is what's going on. Mm. I hope. Ian, question for you. Yes. Will Richter Hammock Slam ever give a full traffic report? Well. <laughs> <sighs> this is this is one of those uh, one of those questions you get asked at conventions and you don't answer because it ruins everything. Uh, a wizard will give a full traffic report in the future, I'm sure. Richter Hammock Slam will give a full traffic report when it becomes funny to do so. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Put it this way, we'll leave it on the list of things to check off on the final episode. <laughs> As the apocalypse hits Innsburg. Yeah. You heard it here first, Kerp Quirp line is ending. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it probably will come to an end. Just who knows when. I don't know. I mean, if we keep bringing in younger and younger people and loading any run, we just have them, like, assume the roles. Well, I think you should, you should all just keep listening because it'll be very interesting. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be extremely excited to find out who Richter regenerates into at the end of this season. <laughs> <laughs> but remember, kids, he's only got 12 regenerations left, so keep your eye on the hammock slam. It's going to be Dr. Hammy Slammer right now. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's no evidence that he's not a Time Lord. Mm. I didn't know if you were referencing that or referencing Duncan Idaho. Oh, no. yeah. Gee, I keep forgetting about Duncan Idaho. Bring me another Idaho. I am really looking forward to that film. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. The director behind Arrival has been given the, the reins to the new Dune film. Oh, will we finally get a uh, brown... Um, uh, people in this not terribly subtle allegory. Hmm. I mean, they, they can't film it in the U.S. Then. I mean, they'll be, be. They'll get Vancouver to somehow play Arrakis. God, wouldn't that be amazing? Actually, well, I mean, Vancouver could could play. Um, uh, what's the Trades home? Yeah. Yeah, Caladan. They would definitely play Caladan. I think you just go to uh, Col not Kelowna, Kamloops to do... Uh, the deserts? Yeah, to do Arrakis. It's not that deserty of yeah. Kamloops. They made, it, they made it work for uh, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. There's a, reason you don't, there's a reason you don't see many desert planets on those sorts of shows. It's because in order to do that, because of the uh, the union rules, you have to take the entire production crew from Vancouver and trans no, well, transport them to to Kamloops, mm -hmm. and that takes money. Mm. What anime do you enjoy that you wouldn't recommend? <laughs> Inachu Ping Pong Club. <laughs> That's different from ping pong. Yeah, it's very different from ping pong. Good answer. Uh, Beach and I used to watch a lot of Inachu Ping Pong Club. The few episodes we got, could get our hands on back in the uh, anime club days when we were in university. And it's it's a bad anime. It really it's, is. It's not good. No. But it is. it can be very funny when you're of a certain age. Yes, it can. I, I haven't rewatched it since I was in my early 20s, and I... I, I don't think I should. It does not hold up. It doesn't hold up? No, okay, hold that's up. unfortunate. <laughs> Is that like... Okay, I used to go over to a friend's place and he would put on Golden Boy. Oh, wow. Which was... At the time. <sighs> yeah. God, that was bad. Yeah, Golden Boy is not good. For, no. for a different reason. But... but that's one I would definitely recommend not people not watch. Mm -hmm. Uh... It filled that role that, um, actually I was talking about this on my home stream a bit today. Has anyone here seen the movie Life Force? Oh no. It was an early 80, mid 80s science fiction movie featuring space vampires um, that filled the role of uh, um, letting people who couldn't rent certain movies see titty. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I see. Yeah, that's that. That sounds like Golden Boy. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you a picture here so you get a sense of. Oh my God. Of let's go eat at your ping pong club. 
I, I think we all need to discuss this because we did learn about this the other night. How do you as Canadians feel about the emerging story about bootleg pizza delivery services? Oh, oh wow. Yeah, that's so cyberpunk. I yeah. love it. I love it. I'm I mean, so... I, got, I was warned about something like that uh, when I was at PAX South in the, uh, the PAX Reddit. Really? And apparently something like that also occurs there where they send in the hotels. They'll put yeah, they'll flyers under your door. Right, and, and it's, it's like it says Domino's or whatever. Yeah, I mean, but it's a, an unlicensed pizza. Black market, gray market pizza, pizzeria. It's delivered to you in a featureless white or brown container. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At which You're you like, know weird. Gone wrong. Yeah. yeah. But they also apparently, at least in Calgary, they'll give you the me they'll give you a menu on a magnet. Yeah, that pizza. has the the phone. Yeah, at which point they've completely like. It's very. I, I was asking Julie if there's a name for species that do this, right? Where the the chicks push, um, the actual young of the the host bird out of the the nest, mm -hmm. and masquerade as the young. If they have a particular name, or if it's just like a particular kind of parrot. Parasitism. And aren't those the cuckoos? Yeah, maybe? cuckoos do that. Yeah. But the, um, yeah, to, I thought when the guy was describing it initially, I thought it was like, oh, they have, like, we had this in um, in Edmonton. There was a place that used to be Boston Pizza, and the the group, the guy, whomever who took it over, kept all the signage, but then changed it into Brado's Pizza. Brado's Pizza. Huh. And um, so it was Braddo's Pizza, but it was very clear this is a different pizza. Company. Right, right, right. But, but no, this was literally, they slip a thing under your door, it's a Chicago deep, 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 deep dish pizza. Right. And when you call, they answer sure. it as that. Right, right, right. And then he said, well, the moment you call for pickup, or you say, actually, I think I don't want to deliver it, I think I want to pick it up. They're like, oh, we have to put you through to a separate line to do pickup orders. Yeah, and they forward your line to the actual store where you have to give your order again. Right. Because they know they can't get caught, and I was like, "Oh wow, no, they literally are. They're they're allowing the the as he said, they're allowing the main company, the real company, to do all yeah. the legwork of yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a the best example is it's they've root kitted your pizza delivery system. <laughs> yeah, uh, apparently it's brood parasitism. Huh. This is what this is what everybody looks like in Inachu Ping Pong. Brood. Okay. They don't. This is not like them like doing weird. Like oh, they're kind of doing weird yeah. faces, but really, they're all kind of grotesque. And that's okay. Like yeah. Actually, much well, better art I, than you'd see in the series. Yeah. I actually really enjoy grotesqueries. Oh yeah, you'd love this show. This question comes from Fan Out. Dear Doctor Blur, if Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Then is he insane? <laughs> I'm not a psychiatrist. The problem is that this is... I'm not doing the same thing over and over again. I'm doing the same thing. The, the Dreamcast is hopefully not. I'm not doing the same thing over and over again. I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you just said those like three seconds <laughs> apart. On purpose. With me right here, you would have looked me in the eye if I could make eye contact with you and still hold my dignity. Oh, I've been in contact with a lot of lead today. <laughs> what, what is the expectation? Yeah. Well, the expectation here is that uh, the Dreamcast was never good at reading CDRs to begin with. Okay. I mean, it could, but it not always that well. And so what's going on here is we're hoping that eventually the Dreamcast is going to pick up on the little pits in the CDR that has been burned at a faster speed than I would have liked to have burned it. I think I burned it four times. You're generally supposed to burn it one time just to get that maximum burn in. Mm. And also CDRs got cheaper and cheaper as they were made in terms of quality and, well, here we are. Remember when you could buy like Kodak Blacks? Oh yeah, no, I had, I had Kodak Blacks. You I bought mean, those for pirating PlayStation One games, because the black mattered apparently. Yeah, the reflective surface was different. It didn't matter. 
Hey, uh, Ian. Do you have any thoughts on the latest episode of Blood, Iron, Orphans, Gundam thing? That's kind of, uh, putting it out there, Iron Blood Orphans has kind of fallen off my radar these days. So I, I may or may not finish it, depending on what else is out there. You were going to mention something, Cam. I was just wondering what it's going to look like when uh, pizza places now, instead of getting root on your pizza delivery, start spear fishing. Ooh. <laughs> right? Wow. Like, like you, you call Domino's and then Pizza Hut picks up and it's like, whatever you want, we'll, we'll match it and we'll give you $5 off. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. They, they might not even do that. They might just be like, oh, hey, it's Pizza Hut. And you might just be like, yeah, whatever, good enough. That yeah. is true. I think what you'll need to do is set up some sort of high-frequency pizza trading. I mean, unless the pizza place that I end up getting picked up by is really awful, I'm not making that phone call again and talking to another human being. Yeah, exactly. Like, you've already committed to pizza, yeah. right? Which implies that you're kind of like, I like pizza, but when, I've, when I'm like, oh, I'm just going to order a pizza, it's not because I'm, like, ready to have a fucking argument with somebody, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like if I if I called Domino's and Panago intercepted that and said whatever you're doing will match it, like whatever whatever you're gonna pay today for your pizza, we're gonna match it. I'd be like that's fine. I like Panago. Yeah. But if it was like if I called Domino's and Pizza Hut picked up, it'd be like maybe not today. Yeah. Maybe I don't feel like pizza today. <laughs> and then I figure out something else to do. Like I do have you know I have my limits. Yeah. No, I'd rather I'd rather go better than worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it would be interesting if that became like a, a competition where they're like, well, if I can just get in and be like, well, I'll match your lower thing, then it becomes like an auction over what kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. Would would there be just wind up with like pizza pizza markets I, I where have, you're like, I want a pepperoni with this and this. I have Send ordered, me your bids. I've ordered from Boston Pizza simply because it was the only option at the time that let me do online ordering, and <laughs> I didn't want to talk to a human being. God, I do love the fact that, he went, that online ordering is a thing now. I really don't want to have to do an RFP when I do a pizza order. <laughs> That's fair. Sounds like an enormous pain in my dick. No, I can't segue with that. Speaking of enormous pains in the dick, it's 9 o'clock. Yep. <laughs> you can stop trying if you want to now, Ian. I've decided I think we're going to stop trying for the evening. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for watching tonight here on Tinker, Taylor, Solar Fry. I've enjoyed my time. I hope you've enjoyed your time, too. And if you do, woo, you're still on. And if you have enjoyed your time, thank you for enjoying yourself. God, where am I going with this? Subscribe. Yes. We'd like to you, thank you, those you, of you. you. Your honor does me honor. This has no honor. This show has no honor. Thank you so much to those of you who did subscribe today on twitch.tv and uh, we'll read those out to you mm. yeah, at this time but of course we'd also like we'd also like to thank those of you who chose to subscribe at patreon.com slash letting ready run because that also helps us out here and keeps the lights on mm -hmm. and of course if you're interested in any sort of uh, wooden goods for your role playing we recommend you go check out Wormwood Gaming, mm -hmm. where you can get free shipping within the United States with the code LRR, or use LRR World to get shipping anywhere else in the world with a $10 discount. $10 off with LRR World, free shipping in the U.S. with LRR. And if you're in the need for a new chair, well, um, we'll talk about that next time we're in Studio A. B. You can see the chair. Yes. Okay, I'm good. We can start now. Here come tonight's Twitch subscribers, who are... Cool Hand 2 has resubscribed for 28 months, saying, woo, woo. Guy 88 has subscribed for 38 months, saying, 38 months, that's almost a whole desert bus. Oh my god. <laughs> Benvolio has resubbed for the second month, saying, we are happy for, we are here for dry humor and certainly not the chance of a live industrial accident. Oh. Edgy Berserker subscribed for seven months, saying, always happy to catch TTS of five. Thanks for tuning in. Max Fan has resubbed for the fourth month. Thank you very much, Max Fan. You're in my dreamcast. WJMCK has subscribed for five months, saying, always have to do subscribe during TTSF. Cheeto Jack has resubbed for the 32nd month, saying, boop. Sketchy details for 41 months, saying, I can tell what the problem is. The mi microphone has a tape that says bad on it. Can't be good for the old self-esteem, that. <laughs> Everest Magnus has reset for the fourth month, saying, keep being awesome. Thanks for all the great stuff you make. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. you too. 
Plummeting Sloth subscribed for 42 months saying, we co-creating stream. I'm working on some early federal silk breaches. Ooh. Ooh. EOTFOF has reset for the third month. Uh, fact or fiction, I'll choose the pile of two. On a rampage 83 for 36 months doesn't say anything. Oricus has resubbed for the second month saying, I can only afford to sub one channel, so I feel it necessary to give it to you guys for the sheer amount of great content, PS loving the more frequent AFKs. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Oricus. Thank you. Dr. McBoop has subscribed for two months. Heart. Harmless Penguin has resubbed for the 12th month saying, Happy Subversary. Congratulations. Happy one year. Thank you for doing it right. Redblaze57 has subscribed for three months. Three months. There's a joke in there somewhere. Wukonis has reset for the 10th month, saying, Lur, awesome, forward slash. Iced Slee. Iced Slee is a new subscriber. Solemn Storm has reset for the third month, saying, Cameron Premium Twitter content, Lauder. Pariah Wolfen is subscribed for 38 months, saying, Miniatures and microphone repair, much fun, very geek. Hmm. Itazu has reset for the 42nd month, saying, But happy Adam's Versary. <laughs> Feister Ermine has subscribed for five months, remaining silent. Pixelated Painter has reset for the fifth month, saying directions unclear, microphone is now a speaker. Oh god, no. Always was. Lunatic93 for, for three months, saying it's three for me. Tyrant Taco has reset for the 38th month, saying say my name. Also, thanks for being entertaining. NP. You're welcome. Sandwich Ked has subscribed for four months, very quiet TTSF, subbing for more flames. That's a good reason to sub. <laughs> Zanzibar has resubbed for the 37th month, saying, don't ship things out of me without my permission, please. <laughs> Red Nick Dragon is a new subscriber. Ritty Coon, too, has resubbed for the fourth month, saying, late, but certainly not never. Oh, Railroad Tycoon. Dr. Railroad Tycoon, Sabados right. is a new subscriber. Welcome. Yeah. Trunks42260 has resubbed for the second month. Welcome back, Trunks. Nice. And we'd like to thank Earthen One and Zerg539 for the bits. The, the bits. bits. The bits. bits. The bits. So that's it for us tonight. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow is New Day Tuesday, where Adam will be playing Horizon, Horizon. Zero Dawn. Yeah, um, we'll shoot dinosaurs with arrows. Yeah, and then we'll be back on Wednesday for more tomfoolery. Schedule's up at twit at loadingreadyrun.com, where you can go for all the great shows. We'll see you in a fortnight, chat. Thanks so much for being with us. Mm -hmm. Never forward, never learning. Bye.